This episode of Your Mom's House is brought to you by Sattva. Big news here. There's a new offer. Go to Sattva, S-A-A-T-V-A dot com slash Y-M-H and get $225 off your purchase. Go now, S-A-A-T-V-A dot com slash Y-M-H and get a new mattress. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to your mom's house with Tom Segura, Tom Segura, and Christina Pajitsi. Welcome to your mom's house. This episode of Your Mom's House is brought to you by Whoop. Every day I wear my Whoop and I love this thing. It provides so much personal insight into what's going on with my body, my sleep performance, the strain, how I've recovered, what's going on with my resting heart rate. I love it. Right now it's May, it's Mental Health Awareness Month. In the current situation we're in, uh, in this quarantine, it could not be more important to be uh, monitoring the stress put on our bodies and how we recover on a day-to-day basis. I love all the insight. They ask you questions. Did you drink? Did you smoke weed? Are you experiencing stress? Did you read? Were you looking at things on a screen device? Do you share your bed? You input what you did. You go through your day. You put yourself through the stress of exercise. You sleep to recover. And you get all this data to study and see how what you're doing is affecting what your body ends up doing. It's, it's amazing, and I love it. Uh, for our listeners, Whoop is offering 15% off with the code YOURMOM at checkout. Go to Whoop. W-H-O-O-P dot com. Enter your mom at checkout to save 15%, sleep better, recover faster, and train smarter. Optimize your performance with Whoop. I love my Shady Rays. We are a huge Shady Rays family. We use them in our backyard when we're having fun in the sun, in the pool. Why? They're fantastically made sunglasses. I refuse to pay a ridiculous amount of money for sunglasses uh, when you can buy Shady Rays, independent. They are not just some big corporation that overcharges for shades. Everyone knows sunglasses are way overpriced. Uh, yeah, Shady Rays has an excellent warranty. Did you know that they will replace your Shady Rays for any reason? No questions asked. No questions asked. Fell off your face jet skiing? No problem. Replace that. So it's got that uh, lifetime warranty. They make quality stuff, man. Oh, Shady Rays also provides 10 meals to fight hunger in America with every order placed, and they've provided over 10 million meals to date. How great is that? So here's the deal. Exclusively for our listeners, they give us the best deals they have to offer. This is a Black Friday level deal. Use code HOUSE for 50% off two or more pairs at ShadyRays.com. Buy one, get one free. You can get Two pairs of shades for $48. Redeem only at ShadyRays.com, where you can find all their newest and best shades. And we're back. What's up, chomos? <laughs> don't uh, do it as bad. Don't do it as bad. <laughs> Man, we got a, I have a, a real surprise for you. I got some Tommy John. <gasps> I got Tommy John for you today. I... Don't do it as bad. <laughs> yeah. You know. You miss him. Ooh, I you miss... know, like dead ass, though. <laughs> He's the best. He's back, and I got to tell you something. Doesn't look good. Oh, no. You're kidding. <laughs> no. What's going on with Jommy John? Uh, I think Jams? as soon as you see the clip, you'll know exactly what's oh, going on. I miss him so much. Remember yeah. when he gave us that thoughtful message for July 4th last year? Yep. You, you got to take your Ubers. Take your Ubers. <laughs> yep. Yep. <gasps> yeah. Play girls and play That's boys. That's over there. Oh, wrong clip. <laughs> <laughs> Still a... F- that hole over there. <laughs> Yeah. You are completely retarded. Whoa. I'm whoa, doing it. I'm doing the Jeez. I'm doing an impression, guys. Jeez. You use the R one. Yeah. <laughs> so it's great to be back. I gotta say, ever since uh last week uh, uh Nadav apologized to me. Yeah. We have been on the same level. Really? We have been vibing. Yeah, it's really good. It's good to be, you know what I mean? To feel like that at work again. Absolutely, man. I've yeah. I've missed how this was. You yeah, know? it's like, it feels like everything's normal. And how it was is now how it is, right? Yeah, yeah. No, really? yeah. yeah. And you think this is because you hashed it out with your poem? And- it's the power of poetry. You know, I have somebody that would have mocked that so long ago, but you know, working with my guy to like, he's like channel channel those like violent, rageful thoughts 
onto the paper. And then I didn't realize, I didn't realize I actually screwed up. I wasn't supposed to read that oh. to Nadav. Oh. I was just supposed oh. to write it. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. He wasn't supposed to hear it. He wasn't supposed to hear it. That was yeah. just for was you. It? Well, I didn't realize it at the time. He was like, you read it to him? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, oh, no, no, just write it. And then that's the exercise. I was like, oh, okay. He goes, right. if you read it to him, he could probably think you're threatening him. And I was like, oh, you know. Well, that it didn't, and it didn't read like that. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, that too, and uh, maybe it would make you feel even angrier. Yeah, but I, I felt fine. Now felt you're great. calm. Now I'm calm, and then, yeah. and then to hear his, you know, was was lovely. That so, made you feel even stronger. Oh, I felt great. Yeah, the two of you, your bond now is strong. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. okay, Nadav. You feel better. Like this is. I'm the happiest I've ever been. Wow, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm so glad you guys worked this out. Yeah, me I'm too. I'm so glad. I'm so happy, and I'm proud of both of you for I- expressing yourselves. Mm-hmm. This is a wonderful thing. Thank you. Yeah. Well, um, this is going to be a great episode. We have I can't wait. So much to to go over, so much to share with you, and um, nothing like getting an episode of YMH started like the <laughs> late great Conald E. Peterson. Let's get this show on the road. Here we go, man. Come on. Sheriff's office. What's up, brother? Oh, man. Hang on. What's up, girl? Nobody wants to talk to you. You know it. That's the sheriff's department. (laughs) This shit is big time. Don't bring anyone mugging to this. Yo, I'm going to Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to your mom's house. So crazy. With Tom Segura. Oh, my Tom God. Segura. And Christina Pajitsi. Christina Pajitsi. Welcome to your mom's house. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fat smoker. How do you get a job here, you fuck face? <laughs> he, is, he has such a relationship with the sheriff's department that yeah. the guy that answers is like, hold on a second, like passes the phone to somebody who is immediately like, God damn it, no one wants to talk to you here. <laughs> <laughs> he must be every day yeah. harassing the shit out of them. I mean, can you imagine how many times you got to be calling before they're oh. like, oh, fuck this asshole again. And the sheriff who answers, he's like, Fed's like, <laughs> What's up, brother? <laughs> the guy's like, oh, hold on, man. <laughs> Sheriff's office. What's up, brother? Oh, man, hang on. <laughs> hang on, right away. <laughs> What's up, girl? Nobody wants to talk to you. You know it. <laughs> no one I wants to talk to you. I just gotta go trash somebody. I gotta go trash somebody with my powers on record. Uh. It's pretty easy. <laughs> It's like taking candy. So, huh? It's like ca- taking candy from a baby or uh, flagging a hot chick over to you with a bag of meth. <laughs> I've never heard that uh, analogy. Never before. heard it either. Flagging, flagging a, a hot, hot chick, chick over to you with a, a bag, bag of meth. meth. Yeah. Hmm. Well, potato, potato, tomato, tits. Everybody's got a different thing. Yeah. I wonder what type of hot chick is turned on <laughs> by the bag of meth. <laughs> A Trish. Mm-hmm. Definitely a Trish. Definitely a Trish. Yeah. <laughs> wow. How many girls can you go like, got some, got a bag of meth here? And they're like, ooh, hold on. <laughs> that is this particular yeah. kind of lady, huh? <laughs> yeah, that really is. And there, there is definitely that lady out there who's like, whoever's got the meth, that's where I'm hanging out. <laughs> well, if their Twinkie's not hot, I'm not whipping out nothing. I don't do meth anyways, but... uh. I'm just saying, you know, if I did, I'd sure have a lot more Twinkies. <laughs> huh? What is he showing on the screen I don't there? No, is that a heart? It's it's a paused heart? somewhere. What is that? Can you see? I don't know. 
It looks it looks like something violent. Like maybe because you know <laughs> maybe it's like a video from his like DIY dentistry. Like it uh-huh. could literally be any of his DIY projects. Right. Yes. That's DIY projects. DIY. Yeah, DIYs. Yeah, DIY going surgery. bad. <laughs> that might be my favorite. That I forgot about. You gotta get it going, bud. That's how you feather your hair. You gotta, you gotta get it going, bud. <laughs> That's the main thing down at Falcon Car Wash. <laughs> you gotta get it going, bud. You know? You gotta get it going, bud. <sighs> yeah. Do you think there's ever a chill moment with I mean That's the thing is like now, but... we get to digest him <laughs> in these little clips where you get to like be amused. Yeah. I empathize with the lady who's like god damn it cuz you realize if that <laughs> is calling you every day it's emotionally it's, exhausting. It's so draining. It's Just, so draining. Even for me to like really digest this I'm yeah. exhausted at the end of Connell. I like also that he calls uh, ladies coochies uh, twinkies. Is that what that meant? Yeah. I Get didn't understand. She didn't have a nice Twinkie. I'm not going to give her that meth. He, you know, it's funny. Is and that- then he's like, I don't do meth, though. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> 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 but I'm not a meth user. Um, he's always he's obsessed with the law, mm-hmm. different colors of cars, and women's pussy smells. Yeah. You'll notice that. Remember when he put up the ad out for a, a housekeeper? Yeah. As long as your uh, pussy is oh, yeah. scurvy. As and, long as uh, you twink and stink on the back of my wink. Yeah. And, uh, if you don't have a scurvy puss, yeah. Yeah. You can clean this house. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I just, it must be miserable to do that much meth. I, I can't even see what the fun is in that. Oh, I can see the fun. <laughs> I see what the fun is for sure. But man, Fed Smoker really intense intense he man. burned that candle at both ends <sighs> crazy that he actually lived that long i know how's jay's car running <laughs> if he's is he give you a ride in it yet no not yet because i don't have the passenger seat bolted in yet what are you telling he's exactly like me i don't have no seats in my car either <sighs> he's talking to a sheriff, sheriff. right now the sheriff sheriff department. you gonna go for a ride yet Huh? <laughs> I mean, she's actually, in, you know, entertaining the, the call. Yeah, now. I tell you, I can't avoid the law enough. Like if I, even in our neighborhood, if I see a car, sheriff yeah. or police, I'm like, mm, eyes forward. Like I don't even want to <laughs> engage. Guy, He's this guy who enga- he engages in criminal activity yeah. every day. He's yeah. like, just call the sheriff real quick. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, fucko? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. I know. Fuck face. Yeah. Hey, get a job here, fuck face. Gotta get it going, bud. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, the beauty of not having any seats in your car oh is that God. when you give a woman a ride, you're halfway there. They're already sitting in your bed. <laughs> yeah, tell Jay, leave that seat out. You're going to ride in the back seat, okay? That's the way we do it at Falcon Car Wars. <laughs> so amazing. Falcon Car Wars got another shout out? Nice. That's how we do it at Falcon Car Wash. He even smokes his cigarettes aggressively. He does. He bites, uh, he bites the it. filter. You're not even supposed to do that. And he, he, can't l- smoke he just it. lets the ash fall in his car, <laughs> like on his hand. Right, he doesn't even he flick doesn't stick his it ash. out the window or anything. <laughs> Such a maniac. Yeah. Smoking with the windows up. Uh, <laughs> feel that much rage uh, every day. Oh my god. <laughs> He's had to have like his adrenal glands must be shot. Of course. Of <laughs> and course. also what's interesting is how people's sunglasses definitely reflect <laughs> their personality, right? Uh, 100%. Like, isn't that like the meth user's sunglasses, yeah. like uh, the aggressive guy? Like, yes. I'm into sports, extreme shit. Yeah. That's the extreme shit guy glasses. You're either, you play center field or you're a fucking <laughs> meth head for those sunglasses. That's all. <laughs> that's it's it. It's intense. It's two options. Yeah, like you wouldn't ever wear those. Hell no. Because they look crazy. Yeah. Those are fucking dork glasses. Yeah. <laughs> dork glasses. Yeah, those are terrible. Terrible. Oh, yeah. yeah, I used to work at Falcon Car Wars. <laughs> they had no idea on how to wash a car. The way to wash a car is to completely fill the car completely full of water. And when they're freaking out, getting in their car, driving off, spray them down too. <laughs> Guys, 
wait a minute. He used to such work. An asshole. He worked at Falcon Car Wash. Yeah, and they didn't know how to wash cars because the way you wash a car is you just fill it up with water, <laughs> and then when the people drive away, you spray them too. Oh, I heard it. It's yeah. what my four-year-old likes. Would yeah, do it's too. exactly what a four-year-old would do. <laughs> how do you wash a car? You put put water in it, and then you spray it. Thanks, man. I almost want to call Falcon Car Wash and be like, "Did you employ a guy named Conald?" And be like, "What was he?" They like? would be like, "Please tell me he's dead." He's not back, is he? He's, by the way, every employer, this is their nightmare story. Oh, yeah. Like, if you, you ever had, like, a crazy employee, all, everybody he ever worked for was like, there was one, one piece guy. of shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, we've, there was the day we almost shut down. Yeah. And it's all, it's all oh. related to him. A hundred percent. Yeah. Nightmare. I can't, I can't picture him holding down a gig for some reason. I no. just can't picture him dealing with the public at all. All his jobs lasted, like, a week. He can't do you know, anything. Yeah. Eight days. <laughs> out of his mind. He probably had a lot of like first shift firings, you know, <laughs> like so you're ready to work and he's like, fuck you, man. And they're like, all right, you got to go, man. Like Who right would away. hire him though? I wonder what he was like 10 years ago. When well, you get him in one of his kind of like sedated periods. periods. Yeah, that's probably that's when he true. gets hired. And then he shows up. You guys ready to fucking do this shit, brother? And then they're like, oh no. What happened to this guy? <sighs> well, I don't do meth, but I can put a stink and wink with the pink. <laughs> It's a cleaner day, you know, they may not like it, but as they drive down the road, they're gonna feel more refreshed. I don't know why I was ever fired from there, but I guess they didn't like me filling their cars full of water. Look he at, is biting look at through the that cigarette. filter. Yeah, look at the cigarettes trashed. He's biting through the yeah. filter. Yeah, that's not how you smoke a cigarette. That's not how you do it. God damn. Yeah. It looks like a piece of gum. Like yeah. someone just gnawed on it. Well. Is the cotton coming out? Yeah. Of it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I always know um, fake smokers in movies is when they do this. Uh uh. Yeah. When I was a smoker, right? Like you're a smoker and adopt. You uh uh. That's the way we smokers do it at Falcon Car Wars. Don't do that. Not unless it's a parliament. Mm. Oh, right. The P Funk dump. Mm -hmm. The, the pilot cigarettes. Yeah. I mean, this is. Yeah. It's a lot. What did he do? He you gotta get it going, bud. He decorated his ceiling, even. I yeah. mean. Yeah. The cards and the yep. skulls. Skulls everywhere. Skulls are always a good sign. It's a chill <laughs> vibe in Connell's car. Just, you know, relax, have a little fun. He's cool to people, too. He's a cool guy. <laughs> He's a nice guy. <laughs> Such a fucking lunatic. Yeah. Um, we had a fun, so a fun thing, a huge shout out to my friend Matt Farah, the smoking tire. He um, hooked me up with some PR cars. Oh, boy. And um, I'm driving this McLaren gt which is so so fun and on the way over here today we're driving to work um we're getting on first we have this complete lunatic anytime you drive a sports car or an exotic car you know some people look at it some people are like are like what is it? you know they like cars and then there's always the people who want to race you you know i didn't realize this shit like we're driving into work and i feel like first of all everyone's looking at you and yeah. then like you said it, it, it definitely arouses mm -hmm. people's interest and fuckery. Like, I people saw this fuck with you. lunatic, by the way. I saw him um, speeding up behind me, like really aggressively when we're on just side streets, you know? Yeah. And leading up to the freeway. And I, I saw him in the rear view. I was like, this guy is driving yeah, he's a maniac. hard. And I, I, I knew it was a Porsche, but I didn't know what kind. And then we get up to the light right before you enter the freeway. There's a cop here. This guy goes around me, cuts off to enter the freeway, like right next to, uh, you know, sheriff's department or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, all right. And he's in a turbo S, so he's in a really, really fast car. Um, and then he cuts off people entering the freeway, you know, on the ramp, cuts them off, so drives crazy. up all the double lines to get onto the freeway. And, it, and he... He revved as he went past, like, like yeah. trying to, like, you want a piece of this shit? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like Connold. If Connold was driving that car. It's nine o'clock in yeah. the morning. There's traffic. <laughs> there's cops. Yeah, what, what are you doing? doing? So, so weird. He fucking zooms off, you know, and I can see he probably is like Connold in the car, like, I pulled that show. That fucker was up. Ah! Just, you know, he was. I, I saw him. Yeah. He was a lunatic. But then we, um, we actually get on the freeway and I punch it. And as I punch it, we hear, Woo! And I was like, oh, oh shit. shit. And I hit the brakes and I look 
and I don't see a cop car anywhere, like anywhere. Yeah, we were. I'm looking, looking in the mirror. I'm looking left anything. and right, and I'm like, "Where? Where is it?" And you go, "Maybe it's on the other side." I'm like, "That doesn't really make sense, though." Anyways, we keep driving, and let's say a few miles. Now we're at the junction. The 405 meets the 101. We're getting on, and as we get on, I hit it again. Woo! I'm like, <laughs> "Fuck!" So I slap, and I look around, and we realize. It's a guy in a pickup truck who has this siren sirens. on his car that he's clearly just taunting people yeah. who he sees hit the gas. <laughs> Holy, he fucked with us so yeah, hard. Yeah, he fucked with me so hard. I'm sure that he just, he <laughs> looks for so people rad. to go like, and then he's just like laughing in his car. It's so awesome. You know that you it can- It was a good, it was a good prank. I enjoyed my it. My cousin and her husband bought a police car mm -hmm. at auction. Yeah. And you can fucking get one with like the, the lights yeah, and everything. Yeah. I think they frown yeah. on that they if don't, you go, yeah. I'm going to try. <laughs> they don't like you to do it as long as you cover up the police department lo yeah. logos. Oh and, yeah, you can't do that. But yeah. that was the, so much fun driving around that car with them. Now I drove a oh, real police God. car in Steve Burns movie. Yeah. Um, like the it's like a it's an LAPD car, completely with all the lights, all the buttons, the dash, it's everything. So fun. And we're on a set, but the set is near the highway, and that movie's <laughs> coming out. It's supposed to come out later this year. I'm sitting there with one of the PAs, and I'm in full uniform, and I was like, "Let's see what this thing can do." So I started, going, <laughs> and he's like, "If you do that here." next to the highway and it affects the way someone drives <gasps> on the highway not only are you going to be in trouble this whole production is going to shut down and i was like <laughs> all right don't be a fucking asshole about it whoops yeah so they made me drive basically further into the set to fuck with it there's no more fun feeling than having sirens and i know i kind of the same shit that amuses a, a two-year-old amuses you when you're yeah, 40 for sure with lights and sirens i wish we had that how do you and i was doing thing? the uh <laughs> you know doing one of those that's the most fun one to do. I know. <laughs> I kind of wish I had them. We should get like a scanner in the car too. Yeah. To find out where the heat is. You know, my dad used to listen to the police scanner all the time. Those guys for... always struck me as strange. Well, yeah. My dad would, and this is when we lived in Resida. You we know, lived in Van Nuys. Scanner guys. Yeah. And my dad would listen to it on the can. Mm -hmm. And then it was terrifying to hear like, to a little girl. Yeah. You're like, oh my God. I don't even understand. How do you get to the point where that's enjoyable though? My dad, I don't know. How I know. 127 counting. Yeah. Guys, like what? <laughs> and you also. Enjoy, you enjoy that? And it's not like my dad knew the codes. So you don't even right. know what they're going for. It's not like the internet where you can Google the uh, codes. 211 in progress right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to hear the action. I'm like, this is fucking weird. Uh, medium bill, white male guns. <laughs> yeah. And my dad, away. he'd be like, there's a guy uh, robbing a bank down the street. I'm like, you really want to know all this How shit How does that right feel? Now? Does that feel good, yeah. dad? <laughs> Dads love scanners. Yeah. I'm surprised your dad didn't get into My dad, I, I called my dad. I said, I'm driving this this crazy fun car. And he's like, you got uh, you got a radar detector? I'm like, no. He's like, you should get one of those. I'm like, uh, okay. No. Yeah. He goes, See if somebody can install it for you. <laughs> and he just goes off whenever you, you know. This way you avoid police detection. I'm like, I know how radar works. <laughs> you don't have to tell me what it does. In that way. He goes, in Los Angeles, there's probably <laughs> someone that does that. You guys got someone for everything. Like, no shit. Okay. A major city has something yeah. for everything, huh? Just call a guy and say, <laughs> are you familiar with radar detectors? I would like you to install one in my vehicle. What? Do you think that our parents were always retarded or <laughs> that that as people get older, they get dumber? Like, I feel like, are we going to be this way to our children, too? Or are we already are that way? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, was he always like that? And now you're just noticing it because now you're an adult and you're like, well, yeah, duh. You gotta get it going, bud. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think I think as as we all get older, we eventually, you know, your capacity to process new things <laughs> diminishes. And yeah. then, you know, you talk to any older person about technology, it's evident. We're, we will be that one day. Like, yeah. You can't imagine the technology that will be available and you'll be talking to somebody much younger and they'll be like, oh, fucking 
idiots. unreal to talk to this person. Yeah. They can't even sync their brain to their phone. Yeah. You know, and you're like, oh, I, don't, I just want to go to the bathroom, you know? But I do remember my mother having dumb suggestions like, why don't you yeah. write a letter to Ellen? Yeah. And then you can be on her no, show. No, here's the thing. Like, That's Nobody not gonna... understands show business. Right. <laughs> outside of show. Because I've gotten that suggestion. Like your immigrant mother suggested it, as did mine, <laughs> as did my dad, okay. as did my uncle and aunt. They were just like, my dad was like, you know, why don't you call Jay Leno? Just call him up. And uh, tell him you like cars too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know. Okay. That's exactly the advice my parents would give me too. You yeah. know, oh, you know, yeah, she said to me one time when I was writing for Chelsea Handler, she would go, you, did you know that Oprah is also hiring? And I was like, hiring what? Yeah. Like A dog walker? I, I have a job at Chelsea lately. Yeah. Like why? But you know, on, the, on her website, she says she is hiring. Uh -huh. go, okay. Yeah, you cannot discuss and anything. You should wear a tool belt when you tell your jokes, and then you have jokes about the different tools on your belt. <laughs> that was her suggestion to me. I swear to God. To do stand up. To do stand up. This is when I first first started, and I was stupid enough to to like ask for their advice, my stepdad and my mom, which was so dumb. I don't wear know why. a tool belt. A tool belt, and then you make jokes. You have a hammer. You have the screwdriver. You have your. Did you know immediately how measuring fucking dumb that was? Of course, and I also derivative. At the at the time, there was a little known comic named Tim Allen, <laughs> who had a very successful show. Yeah. And he had a show called Tool Time on the sitcom yeah. where he baited that Did you that's throw Tim that Allen. in her face? Yeah. I was she's like, like, well, so what? Yeah. I was like, you do it. <laughs> that's Tim Allen's shtick. I can't do Tool Belt. You should have said to her. Imagine a pig with tits. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of pig with tits, you know, this quarantine um, has definitely given me an appreciation for the mail and for, I get very excited now when parcels are coming. I check the delivery schedule and I ordered uh, Josh's tick cups about a week and a half ago, and I've been vigilantly checking the schedule for it to arrive, and it came, and I'm so fucking excited. That's exciting. So the next episode, we will implement the new tick cups, and these are fucking medical grade. I saw them. They look nothing like the ones he had no. on the other day. These are legit norm approved. <laughs> Tit cups. Ah! These are varsity cups. Varsity level. With like a machine that attaches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's basically like if Josh was sitting here and I was going <laughs> like that. And I've been getting a lot of DMs and titties, eh? yeah, a lot of comments that it's Josh's hair that might be impeding the, the ability of the cup to suction. And these I'm new so ones, sure. these don't, these don't see hair. No. These jump right over <laughs> hair. There's no slowing these down. No, and it's in a machine. It plugs in, and the cups are made of glass. It is legit AF. It costs a lot of money. Yeah. So I can't wait. Uh, for this you guys are not going to be disappointed when you see these tit cups you've been impressed by norm's tits <laughs> wait till you see what we do with josh <laughs> josh's tits oh white baby bro uh, so oh white baby bro yeah <laughs> the fidra highway <laughs> the fidra highway bro so the whole white baby um that's the best if you have not experience this i'm telling you i know it's a tough sell for some people but if you go to youtube and you go to my page tom segura i've been doing these podcasts in spanish every few weeks it helps me stay on top of it and um you know I'm, i was touring in spanish before the world stopped so ev twice now i've had my mom on and it is oh my god remark you have no idea i'm telling you she is funnier than 99 percent of comedians we know and in this last one, if you look up the last one, you can turn on closed captioning. Everyone's like, I wish there were subtitles. There are. <laughs> turn on closed captioning and you can read along. But she is so shameless in her like desires for material things from me. And she's just like, buy it. Like, just give it to me. Oh so God. she starts that episode. She goes, thank you for the iPad Pro that you sent me. And I'm like, I, I don't know what you're doing. And she's like, you're the best son in the world. And I'm like, stop it. 
And then we would talk, and then throughout the, she goes, "Tell me you're going to send me the iPad Pro." Oh my and I'm like, God. "Mom, no, I just sent her, like through another guilt thing, a fucking super high end espresso maker. Like this is last month." Yeah, she, she goes, already has a treat. I'm bored. Just send me one of your nice coffee makers. And I was like, uh, and she kept doing this thing where I was like, fine. First, I actually did send her a, a $9 coffee maker, which is like a filter. And I just, and, and she sent me a video that she was like, you are a piece of shit. You are a piece of shit. That was fun. <laughs> but then I sent the really nice one. And I was like, you know, yeah, it's, it's nice. I'm spoiling my mother. The next month, she's like, how about the iPad? Pro. It's the next month. The yeah. next month. It's expensive too. How much is that iPad Pro? I mean, it's over a thousand dollars. For fu- and she's not even doing anything on it. What is she doing? Well, on she's it? like, I did your podcast. I'm like, Mom, you're my mom. Yeah, you're supposed to do that stuff, right? Like, you should just be like, Oh, you're my son. Of course. She's like, I gave you this great podcast. <laughs> you didn't give me seven thousand dollars. <laughs> oh my god. Which was her fee extortion for appearing on a podcast seven grand yeah. like where do you come up with that number she's like i don't know <laughs> so anyways um she has been harassing me right and so yeah i mean she's yeah she tried to get you Shameless. on her side right yeah she asked me to she's like i want to talk to nadal yeah yeah nadal. <laughs> yeah and uh i was like yeah hello and she's like uh, you're uh, Tommy going to get me an iPad Pro, right? And I was like, for what? And she's like, for the for the fee for the podcast. And I'm like, we never pay the podcast. Get, you know, it's like no, an exchange it's publicity. of publicity yeah. stuff. And, uh, and then she's like, you're supposed to be on my side. And I was like, look, I'm always going to be Team Tom. It's <laughs> There's nothing that's going to take me off of Team Tom. I'm there we always, go. I'm a Good, company man. Smart, yeah, we're, loyal. we're friends. Yeah. Best friends. So then she... Um, she kept she uh she sent me these long messages via text and then sent like a, a gif of someone praying. Oh my god. And it was like, please, please. So I just sent her gifts of people crying, you know, <laughs> like <laughs> and she was like, You are mean. You guys so have then she, such a sight. Now I'm putting it together, what's going on here. Really? Yeah. She, it's so she FaceTimed me. I was with Ellis and uh she's like she's like, Alice. Tell Dada to give me an iPad. <laughs> and then I whisper into Ellis's ear. And then he goes, why are you so old? <laughs> and she's like. <laughs> and then I go, tell her. And then he goes, you're too old for an iPad. <laughs> and she's like, tell your father he is too mean. He's like, do you have something else for me to say? <laughs> he likes to do yeah, it now. He like, he like, yeah. He's like, what else should I say? We trained him early. The first time he could really say stuff to her, we were like, you're old. Yep. When are you, when are you going to stop drinking so yep. much? Whole white baby, bro. That's my whole, whole white, white baby. baby bro. It's fascinating that she, she starts this campaign to get stuff. It's a full campaign of guilt. Yeah. And she knows how to get you. She, she knows how to get you. Because you want to know what? Guilt. I bought her the iPad Pro. Of course. She hasn't, it hasn't arrived yet. I didn't tell her because she's been like, she goes, tell me it's coming. And I go, no, it's not. And then I, I took from Toy Story, there's Forky. Yeah. And he's got these <clears throat> big bubbly like eyes, you know, it's like all plastic stuff. I took one of those and I put it on a notepad and I go, it's an iPad. And I showed her that. I'm like, send you one of these, you know, just to be a dick. Um, but I, I actually, I bought her the iPad Pro. It's on the way to her. Because a lot of people were like, are you going to do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have an it. idea. But I had it engraved. On the back, it says, La Reina de los Pedos, which means <laughs> the queen of the farts. <laughs> so she'll be like, this is nasty to put on my iPad. Well, I have an idea, though. What? An exchange. Okay, you're going to end up buying this stuff for her regardless. Why don't we get a piece of merch out of it every time? Do you understand? Like, oh, so yeah. it pays for it. Like, the mug. I think that we should use this iPad as currency good idea. to get the mug. The the dead person mug <laughs> is one that has been forbidden to show uh, the, the audience. audience. It's in our house. It's in our house, and we I sent it to her it. too. So my mother passed out on our couch, <laughs> and she looks dead. <laughs> she legit. So we took looks a picture dead. and we put it on a mug. Yeah. And then we drank out of it and we sent it to her, and she was like. 
you know that it looks like I am a corpse? And I was like, yeah, that's the, that's the whole the best. fun part of it. Well, because you took that picture over Christmas two years ago. Yeah. And then I was like, I make mugs of the family. And so, I, anyway, we put it on just a mug without like a caption, Nothing. without yeah, anything. Just, it's just the photograph. And it's so perfect because people come over and they're like, um, like is that is a that? dead lady? Yeah. On your- <laughs> I'm like, that's yeah, my mom at her memorial. <laughs> <laughs> It is, and I've been trying to get this as a piece of merch now for two years. Yeah, she rejects it And hard. she will not. So but now I we should be able to, I should be like, you keep leverage. asking for shit. Well, let me tell you something. Before that shit gets delivered, that iPad, I say we negotiate the mug. I should call her. Call soon. her right now. Okay. Let's, Let's get see. her on the phone. Let's negotiate this deal before. When do they deliver that iPad? Shit. <laughs> You're right. We, you, you just lost your leverage, Tom. I know. Why don't you call? Let's see, because he... <laughs> We'll know, if, we'll know if it's been delivered yet because she will be... No, um, she would have called you already. Yeah, exactly. Tomecito, my sweet, my sweet boy. Da, 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 da. That's not the time you have leverage with her. She never answers. I know. Never. We're going to have to call your dad. So why don't you just call your dad first? Well, if you know see. she's your never going to answer. Jesus to God, you fucking... Call your dad or right. call the house line. Here, here. Let's do this one. Call. I miss them. I wish they could come visit us. I know. They're so much fun. Now that I learned the secret to your mom is just getting her drunk and buying her panettone, it's we get along I know. so well. Hello? Hey, man. Dad. Hello? Hey, Dad. Hey, buddy. Hey, How hey. You doing? Good, good. Hey, um, by chance, is mom near you by any chance? She's playing bridge. Oh, fuck. Oh, for God. fuck's sake, with the goddamn it's bridge. It's important. It's important. This is important. Hold on, let me see if she, but she, she still has to play because it's live, you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just see if she'll say anything. Okay, hold on. Don't you wish, I wish my dad had that much excitement when I called him. Oh, you can say one thing. I know you are. Hold on. Tommy, she's here. Hey, Mom. Hey, Mom. Yes. I have a great idea. Okay. You know the mug of coffee, the coffee mug that has your picture where it looks like you're dead? Can we sell that? Tell her for the iPad. Oh my God, Tommy. For the iPad. But, uh, but that, and then you definitely get an iPad Pro? How soon do I get it? I'll put a, I'll put a rush order on it. But I, no, no, this is with price, Tommy. To, to just put me that low and present you my bed before God has taken her, can I get my iPad like in two days? <laughs> Why well, I, I yeah. have to put pressure if he's showing me keep dead and ugly. Okay, hold on. <laughs> yes, tell her. Yes, you can get rush it. Order. Rush. Yeah. Okay. Tell, tell her it's um, a rush. It's a rush order. Let me see. I can. <laughs> you guys are look, love look how long I'm getting to, and you don't give a shit. Yeah, when I bad, bro. For an iPad Pro, your wife gets dead in public? No, you're, believe me, you're alive every day. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's not funny, Tony. Okay, I will send it ASAP. I will send it ASAP, yes. No, you have to swear to me. Tony. I swear to you, I will put a rush order on it. <laughs> I'm a witness. Be sure it comes with the typewriter, with everything, Tony. Yeah, you cannot get any lower. Huh? Okay. <laughs> Okay. Okay. The typewriter will come with it. Deal? Is it deal? a deal? Is it a deal? Yes. A deal. Get yes. All right. It's going to be awesome. That's Christina. Yeah. Christina, Christina's here. you put me low. No. Low. Listen, listen, listen. I am getting you what you want. You want the iPad. No. I'm figuring out a way to make it happen. High price. High price. You're giving me what I want. At the most ridiculous, embarrassing. Hold on one second. I'm playing English and you're screwing me up. Because okay, we'll let you go. We'll I let love you. you go. Yeah, go yeah, play. Go play. Go play. Okay, I get it in two days. Huh? Okay, I love you. No, I get it in two days. Say it. You're Say my it. mom and I love you. You have to play triple. You play triple. I get it in two days. Tommy. Okay, I'm putting the rush order on it. I don't know exactly how fast it comes. Oh my God, Tommy, but it's if, coming. If you don't really do it. <laughs> I want to put you on Facebook. Okay, okay, okay. I'll call you later. Have a good game. Bye. 
Yes. Yes, we did it. That's you don't so understand. Exciting. This has been two years in yes. the making. This is this is legit. And I just gave you that mug this morning to drink out yeah, of. It's amazing. We love it, and it's the joke of the house. And now we're gonna get to make it. Yeah. Shit, we have to find the original photograph. I know. Fuck, it's, it's been a while. It's so cool. It is really we great. We have to find that photograph. Speaking of that, though. by the way, uh, there's a bit of a oh, God. refreshment on the uh, merch page. If you go to merchmethod.com slash Tom Segura, we photo. took down a bunch of designs and we put up a bunch of new ones. So there's a bunch of new stuff there. Check it out. Try it out. See what you like. Um, there's YMH stuff, Thick Boy Nation stuff. It's all there. There's I'm the main mommy. Main mommy the stuff. The seeker. Uh, it's my, all there. I got more cool mom shirts. And also check out where my mom's at if uh, if you're interested. 10 milligram so. Tom is there. It's all good. <laughs> um, 10 milligram Tom. Speaking of. And Chardonnay mom. Of that. Here's an um, example. I can't believe we got the mug. That some Dude, are saying. I, we have to find this photo now. Do you know where it is, Tommy? Um, I don't know where it is. I will find it, though. I will find it. I've um, uploaded to that site that I made the mug on. You know what? A lot of people there. have accused fuck. you of stolen valor, but oh, fuck. some are saying that I could be accused of it. <gasps> I just went to a Starbucks. I had on this police department hat, <gasps> and the lady behind the counter was like, what would you like? And I, I think I said, like, soy latte. I was like, oh, ring up my friend. He ordered something. And then she charged, like, $2. And I was oh, like, boy. Um, you, didn't, uh, you didn't charge me the whole thing? And she was like, oh, no, we appreciate your service as a police officer and I was like oh, and you know what I did oh okay <laughs> acted like it was my hat wow that's embarrassing that's from wow. episode 224 of your mom's I remember now where I don't say where I got the hat because I don't want them to get in trouble mm -hmm. but I got that it's hat. my favorite hat of the house how yeah about? yeah I got the hat and uh, somebody was I just wore it because I remember when they gave it to me they were like oh you know it's, it's obviously for you but um, you know don't wear it in Don't, public. Yeah, be careful when you wear it in public. Um, I stopped wearing it because I was wearing it on walks when we lived in Redondo. And she really liked the hat. I loved the hat. Because and by the way, I told her that story and she was like, I want to get free coffee. <laughs> so I started to wear the hat in Redondo when we <laughs> lived there. And people did treat me with a lot of respect and I really liked it. And I would walk down the beach and like the, the beach patrol would be like, yep, like they give me a nod. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, shit. Good to see another good person yeah, out here. Yeah, I was like, yep. oh, damn. But no, I, we don't wear the hat anymore because we have kids now. And yeah. It's not cool to we teach them to that jail. stuff. Yeah. So, um, but here's a. Uh, I do wear my cooling you know, hat a lot. Pendulum swings one way or the other. So there's another clip here. How many people have you killed? How many people haven't I killed? Wow. That's a question I prefer. Yeah, you don't, you, by the way, you don't just ask. Oh, really? I'm sorry. I'm not, I haven't been in the Marines in 10 years. You were in the Marines? Yeah. I could feel <laughs> that. I could see that. What? Claiming you were in the Marines? Well, yeah, but it was a long time ago, babe. But that's a, that's it's a different time. That's stolen valor. Desert Storm. I don't like to talk about it, babe, but painful memories. This episode of Your Mom's House is brought to you by Stamps.com. I love Stamps.com because it makes you feel like you're in control of everything. You're now printing postage from your house. Did you ever think that was possible? I didn't. Mm. And you can actually do it now. And you actually save money with these discounts that you can't even get at the post office. As if that wasn't enough, Stamps.com also offers UPS services with discounts up to 62% and no UPS residential surcharges. What is going on? Stamps has taken over. Stamps.com brings all the services of the U.S. Postal Service right to your computer in the safety and comfort of your own home, office, or anywhere else you are hunkering down right now. Whether you're a small business sending invoices, an online seller shipping out products, or you're just working from home and need to mail stuff, Stamps.com can handle it all with ease. Just use your computer to print official U.S. postage 24-7 for any letter, any package, any class of mail, anywhere you want to send it. And once your mail is ready, you just leave it for your mail carrier, schedule a free pickup, or drop it in a mailbox. No human contact required. It's that simple. Right now, our listeners get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus postage and a digital scale without any long-term commitment. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in MOM. That's stamps.com. Enter the code word MOM. Stay safe, my friends. We have a number of things that we need to take a look at. I don't know. This just says beware. So I don't know what this is. 
Let's take a look. I know. I don't like what it. What you are looking at is my sperm. Oh. It's about 50 or 60 jerk-offs. Took about six months to do this. I'm going to make something out of it. I'm not too sure what, but I want it all to dissolve and melt so I can work with it. Oh, my God. Doesn't it look yummy? This is life at its best. Is this fucking norm? My Stop lovely it. sperm. Why up. waste it on a pussy? Is this when fucking norm? It, is this norm again? Stop barfing. I this can't. is Tonetta. I really can't. I oh, my can't. God. This is too much. Oh, my God. Who is this? Is this, this is not Norm, is it? Is it Norm? I'm seeing stars right now. This yeah. is not Norm, but remember when I sent you guys a picture the other day of saying Zolo has figured out how to prep yeah. clips that make him want to throw up? Yeah. And this was the one he was working I don't, on. I think I can't do this one. This Can one we go forward? Really bad. I really can't. We're I, back. I, We're back, I, I don't think so. I, I got to tap out of that. Now I have it under heat to try to melt it or dissolve it. A little quicker. Looks oh pretty yummy. Stop. Right Stop. Let's put Stop it back coughing. on the heat. I don't like it. And we shall return. Like <coughs> Stop it! Stop! Stop! Uh, uh, <laughs> oh. Oh, my God. So what about this makes you feel uneasy? Dude, come on. What the fuck? I actually have a surprisingly easy time with this. Really? Mm-hmm. Doesn't bother? Same? He said same? Yeah, same with Potter. I mean, because I think with the... What about Eddie? Oh, Eddie's having a real rough time right now. <laughs> 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 this is... <clears throat> Well, because the poutine was just like, there's no way you could trick yourself into thinking it's something else. Yeah, come in. What did he make with it? Uh, we're, we're almost there. <laughs> so what does he make? He's, uh, he's, I mean, I don't really want to spoil okay, the surprise. Okay, fans, we are back. And here we have it, right here. I made two Oh, it's fucking baloney. In the mold of nipples. Ah. Uh. There we go. Ah, uh, what is wrong with There's this There's one. What is he Here's making? I don't understand, Tom. Nipples? They, yeah. He's making sperm nipples? What? They're just nipple molds? Made of his jizz? Mm-hmm. This you, is... You wouldn't buy that? Vomit-inducing to the yeah, max. Yeah, this is like... You don't like that? <laughs> Anyways, fans, there we are. Tornado sperm. And I, these ones here I had already made for a while. Oh, look at his place. I posted these ones here. <laughs> Holy There's shit. three here that have been hanging for about a year. Okay, They're still why? available. Oh, good. Okay. Available. Available, guys. You can still find these on Amazon. But these ones are special. Okay. Because they're fresh. Okay. Anyways, fam. Fans. Take care. There's no fans. And have a lovely day. There's no fans. Isn't Ta -ta. It... This is Tonetta. Isn't it crazy that that guy lives indoors? Yeah. Like that Yeah. you hear what he does, you see what he does, and he has a place. Yeah. He's a person. You know what this reminds me of is Silence of the Lambs. Yeah. When he's making his lady suit. This is exactly the kind of person that does this stuff. Oh, is she a great big <laughs> fat person? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Is she great? Yeah. She, oh, Rebecca yeah. Bamel. She was a big girl. Oh, yeah, I remember her. Oh. Yeah. I hate him. I hate this. This is darker to me than <sighs> poutine. Can I tell you why? This is darker than poutine because there's no joy in this. This is pure creep. Poutine yes. was a joyful experience. He was having fun. This guy's not having fun. This guy is like channeling his dark rage. His yeah, mommy this rage. is bad. I this like is it. like serial killer Good shit. job. I don't like yeah. it. I don't like this shit at all. Oh, uh, fuck, man. That, that is so gnarly. That was really tough. Speaking of gross things, look at this. Have you seen this? I don't like that either. Okay, I'm going to fucking throw he up. He is pulling Stop a it. condom. He's like launching it. it. Come Why on. do it? What is happening? What is happening? You so, know I can't handle vomit stuff. No, it's not. No, it's pretty cool. This one's pretty cool. It's not cool. Yeah. <laughs> She's no, fine. Not looking. He's trying to get it down. Oh. What's Just tell me what's happening. I don't want to. Um, this lady's like, what is, what is that? And then he's like, no, it's good. No, tell me the truth. 
It's almost done. Is it pukey? I don't like puke stuff, babe. You know I don't like it. No. She's sick. She feels sick. Well, what's happening? Tell She's me. She's coughing. It's over. It's over. What did she try to eat? Sperm, right? Yeah. She tried it was to eat from it. the condom and they, they like did uh what's it called? You know? Uh slingshot. Last slingshot. Ah, uh, a slingshot. Yeah. What are you wrong with you guys? Where are you finding this stuff? We just have this the best so fans gross. in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. That was great. I think mm. I, I don't I don't know why, but sperm gets get sperm is intolerable. Poo poo fine. I, I can yeah. watch someone eat poopy all day, but yep. jizz? It's a lot, right? It's a lot. Let's shift speed here. Thanks. Let's let's find someone who's a little more chill. I need a drink Hello again. Hello to everybody <laughs> in the universe. From, my name is Randy Barnes. From one, I love women. I love women with all my heart. I love talking to women. I love getting pictures from women. Friend quest is from women. Friend quest is from women. What? Number two. Oh, friend quest. If quests. you are a dude, do not send me a friend quest. Do not send me pictures. Do not ask me to be your friend. I do not like talking to other guys. I am not gay. <laughs> women are only allowed to send me friend requests and talk to me. Friend requests. <laughs> if you try to use a female page to, and you're a dude, I will find you. Find out. I know how to find that out. And if I find out you're a dude, you will be reported and blocked. Women okay. only. I like being friends with women only. Have a blessed day. Okay, so so far you're getting like you're getting the picture of what's up. Yeah. What kind of dude it is. I got it. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so that's daytime, Randy. <laughs> and then yeah. things take a turn at night. Uh oh. Who's up right now? <laughs> you're as horny as hell like I am. If you are up and horny, send me a invite to talk to you. Peace out. All right. Yeah. Cool guy club. <laughs> It's a cool video to post. Ooh, yeah. Where it's barely visible <laughs> in pitch bl- pitch black darkness. <laughs> you just see the faint face. Go, you horny right now? Huh? Yeah, and girls girls love to be talked to like that, too. Yeah, yeah I'm do. horny. Who is up right now and I horny mean, as fuck? Yeah, girls are not courted generally. Ooh, horny as hell like I am. But that is the t- common denominator of the cool guy is to have <laughs> poor visibility. Yeah, no. That's why he got the full solo treatment, you know? He he earned it. He totally earned it. Yeah. It's really cool. Oh man. He's so he's so cool. Oh, this is amazing. The coolest. So as many of you know, we got some heat from the wrestling world uh, a few weeks ago. Did and we? Yeah, yeah. Some people I didn't were notice. real upset. I guess we were talking some shit. <laughs> talk some shit. And um we're going to get into a whole bunch of wrestling stuff, oh, but God. the great Fart Simpson. Fart Simpson um, <laughs> has done amazing, amazing stuff for us, phone calls. He's now putting these phone calls on his IG, and I want to make sure I give it the correct, um, yeah. Fart Simpson is one of the most gifted prank callers of all time. Amazing. So if you go on Instagram, fart underscore Simpson <laughs> underscore prank calls is where he's now posting these. And he really, I'm telling you, he's done some incredible ones for our show. He's done them for other shows as well. Here is his latest. <laughs> um, it's me. It's Tom calling a wrestler um, <clears throat> to talk about my my fandom with the world of wrestling. It's, 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 it's fantastic. <laughs> Hello. Hey, my name's Tom. It's my brother Norman's birthday today, <laughs> and he is just absolutely obsessed with wrestling. Oh, okay. Could he talk to you on the phone and just talk to a real wrestler for just a minute? Maybe you can wish him a happy birthday? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, cheers, man. That's awesome. Hold on one sec. I'll get him. Hey, Norman, I got a surprise for you on Norman. the phone. Norman. <laughs> Hey, how's it going, man? Hey, Norman. Uh, this is a captain. I hear it's your birthday. Yeah, I'm happy. How are you coping <laughs> now with quarantine? Um, you know what? I'll, I'll be honest with you. It's 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 not good. Yeah, this is real. You know, we can't uh, we can't do what we love right now. So it's uh, it's a bad deal. All the wrestling fans out there are really cool. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely, man. And we we definitely miss them. I think wrestling is pretty amazing. <laughs> I, I would agree with that. You know, I've I've been uh, been around it for quite a while now, and uh, you know, it's 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 not like anything else. I have such a soft spot for it. Ric Flair. 
Yes, <laughs> absolutely. You gotta you gotta love the nature boy. You gotta love the nature boy. Although I was always uh, I was always a Ricky Steamboat fan, though. Uh, of course, he's so good. For sure, for sure. <laughs> They're real fights. These are not just stunt people. <laughs> I agree. Not everybody thinks that, but I, I definitely, I definitely, uh, you know, it, it's it's as much of uh, you have to be as much of an athlete to be a wrestler as you do any other sport. Yeah, it's a real sport. They're completely not gay. <laughs> For sure. And I think you're a pretty amazing wrestler. Oh, there's a there's a lot of people a lot better than me, but I appreciate that. You see SmackDown? <laughs> um, <laughs> you know what? I don't. Have cable, so I don't. Uh, I don't get to watch SmackDown. Man, did you see the Undertaker? They grabbed a chair. Man, <laughs> uh, I never thought we would see the day that the Bass Brothers would hold the belt. Right, right. Wrestling is so amazing. I love wrestling. <laughs> Good. I don't think I've ever shared with you my Ric Flair story. Okay, what's the Ric Flair story? So when I was uh, nine, we left Cincinnati and we moved to Minneapolis. And one of the people I played uh, peewee football with was David Flair. <laughs> one day, we were at one of our peewee games and somebody goes, uh, oh, hey, Ric Flair's here. That's crazy. And we look and there's a white limousine <laughs> at a peewee football game. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And there's a dude in a full-length mink coat. And we're like, that's Ric Flair? And they're like, yeah, that's David's dad. Wow. So amazing. He's not been an active wrestler in how long? Um, oh, man. At, at least five years. I don't know, man. At least. But, um, you know. What? I feel like when people talk about wrestling, they... They could be talking about sloppy, hangy balls. <laughs> okay. Come step in the ring with me and find out. I'll, I'll, I'll pass on that. <laughs> You're a fucking idiot. I mean, you know, that's, uh, that's all personal opinion. We got to explore our options here because I, I really want you to grow some nice tits. Oh, I, 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 got, a pretty good, I got a pretty good pair right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right any anything else fuck wrestling all right you're way too stupid mm -hmm. i love when somebody's scared mm. um i'd like to apologize i lost my temper on it all right <laughs> when I feel alone. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Bart so Simpson good. knocked it out of the park again. I love when I love he... Um, uh, I think that wrestling is very cool. <laughs> <laughs> like those jump edits. I love when he gets the other person to laugh and then you laugh harder. Yeah. It's so dumb. It's amazing. It's so funny. He really is a master of these. <sighs> Thank you, Fart. Yeah. And I love how he gets in the homosexual stuff. Too. Always. Like, get big yeah. balls. And he's balls. like, um, I don't know. Get some nice. Tits, it's like, he's like, I think my tits are big enough. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, it's big. It's it's big news, and we should explore a little more <sighs> uh, news right now. Maybe we can have um, our buddy Potter jump in. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, how you doing, man? How's it going? How about that call? That was great, huh? Oh, that was fantastic. I yeah. enjoyed that quite a bit. He does a great job. Um, well, Potter, you're such a news junkie. Yeah, yeah. I, take, I was taking a gander at the headlines. I thought I'd share some with you, you know, yeah. uh, see what you think here, you know? Yeah. I'd love to. Uh, so people have been uh, traveling great distances to get haircuts. One gentleman traveling 600 miles to get his haircut. 600 miles? I would in a in a heartbeat. You really think so? Yeah, I'll tell you why. I've had the old, same guy doing my hair, Alan Martinez. Shout out for the last twenty years. I would go to the ends of the earth for this guy, because I'll tell you what, it's so hard to Can get I tell you to get blonde, right? Can I tell it's you so something? hard to get a blonde. Phoenix is yeah. four hundred miles from here. Sure, worth it, Alan Martinez. I love you, homie. What's up, homie? Mm -hmm. So you'd go to Phoenix to get a haircut? From Alan, yeah. For, I, I would because I'm telling you, I've had my haircut done by other people like when I was in college and when I was in London, and it was garbage. It's so hard to find find Alan. I would do it. 
I would do wow. it. You know me, I'm loyal. I definitely years. feel like there's nothing, you know, I've been doing it at home. and um, Before the quarantine. <clears throat> yeah, but I mean, yeah, but I'm saying, like, I like having someone do it, but... You know, well, this traveling. fucking TikTok is a guy, yeah. <laughs> and he drove six hundred miles. I mean, to get That's what? insane to get a bowl cut. What it's, was he it's doing? It's insane. Yeah. I mean, no, the, of course you don't do that for a That's guy. Wild. I think that's wrong. Like from listen, I get tin foil. I got blonde. It's yeah, a what could this guy? Thing. What what, could what the haircut kind of look haircut like? could it have been? Then again, Mark Davis, the owner of the Raiders. <laughs> Is that the guy with the... Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Was this guy getting a bowl cut? Yeah, you're right. Specific? Because he would travel, I think, a few hundred miles for his haircut. Yeah, yeah he would go to the ends of the earth to get in that. In his minivan, in his Dodge <laughs> caravan. Oh, he's one of those where he's like, yeah. uh, Warren Buffett drives a Sonata. Right. Yeah. Or whatever. So <laughs> right, right. It's stupid. Fucking Such dumb rich people who don't use their money. Yeah, Asshole. Just spend your money on cool Also, uh, Eddie Haskell died. Uh, uh. I wish I looked up the guy's real name. I feel bad that I didn't, but... Uh, <laughs> Eddie Haskell's dead. Did you ever get called that when you were a kid? No, I didn't get that. Do you ever I, have kids in your school? I remember kids yeah. in my school, a teacher would be like, that guy's a real Eddie Haskell. Yeah, For being a little... Like a little shit? Yeah. It's from Leave It to Beaver. He's the original he's, shit. He's, he's original douchebag. Little menace. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. By the way, have you cut your hair? No, yet? not once. Not w- So you have quarantine hair going. Oh, yeah, baby. I and look like the fucking Joker. I'm like, all I have are negative thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> have, and you've trimmed your beard at all or no? Nothing. Uh, I've trimmed my beard once. But so the, hair, pretty the hair the hair is pretty wild. Yeah, dog. Are you gonna you're not gonna cut it till it's over? I told myself I wouldn't cut it until I had a set scheduled. Oh, wow. Yeah. Which right now is November. So or September. So That's the first set? That's the first show I have scheduled, but set wise, I mean I'll do it for I'll shave it when I get to do an open mic or whatever, so you got to take a picture of it before you shave Oh, it. I have plenty of pictures okay. I've been taking along the way. None of them are for release yet. Uh, did you hear this? The Army, because they can't go to schools and recruit people, uh, they've been uh, using their eSports team to go on to Call of Duty and recruit kids. So uh, we'll have a, an army full of fat retards <laughs> coming up here <laughs> in the next couple of years. <laughs> Hope, we're, hope we don't have any wars on schedule uh, because <laughs> I don't really want those folks fighting. I agree. A bunch oh of fat God. nerds okay. yeah. fighting they, in the... Maybe they need to go like private pile. They now, wait a minute, though. Wait yeah. a minute because I, you know, I mean, <laughs> I know you're a big eSport advocate. So oh, don't, I am. Aren't you, yeah, but aren't they you slamming your fellow brother? <laughs> you want me out there on the front line? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. I had an army recruiter guy come come like try and recruit me or he did it by phone one time. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh yeah, sure, I'm into it. You know, I acted all into it. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then he goes, have you had any uh, surgeries on your eyes? I go, oh yeah. <laughs> and he, then he got suddenly disinterested. Oh, he did? Mm, yeah, very disinterested. And I you like, gave but him, I want to be in the army. You gave him details? You're like, I have this and I had that. And yeah, like, <laughs> I gave him all the details. Oh. And he was like, well, we're not interested anymore. <laughs> so the few, the proud, the obese, we're going to be... Uh, <laughs> We're gonna have that going on uh, here for you. Did you uh, did you watch the? Uh, <laughs> You're a great newsman. You're the best. You like it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why yeah. can't you have a job at CNN? I, I much know. prefer. I would get fired idea. pretty quick. You guys my hear opinion. this? You guys want my opinion, you right? Can start your your news hour with. You guys hear this? Yeah, a bunch this of fucking shit. shit happening right now. Uh, I would love it. Today, Twitter is celebrating the yeah. 75th birthday of Pete Townsend from The Who. Cool. Also noted pedophile. Like what? Why haven't we? Why are we celebrating? You know, I've birthday? heard this before. It's not a thing you this. hear. He was arrested for I, a computer like, full of kitty porn. I didn't how, know. How that. does that get let go? I don't know. Is the the Who sucks too? It's not like it's. <laughs> I mean, if it was the Beatles, I'd be like, all right, maybe let's let them go. But like, I don't think with the fucking Who that it warrants. You're, you're saying they're like glossing over. They're like a fifth tier. This band. is yeah. like uh, over a decade ago. <laughs> No, and, the, right? the, the he was child arrested. porn, I think it was like 2012 or something like okay, that. Okay, so... It was on my birthday. I, I remember didn't know it that. vividly. <laughs> it was Townsend, January yeah, I remember that too, and then and that it was, um, you know, you're like, oh, this guy's going down, and then nothing's ever happened. You are forgiven. Yeah. And, and Is that like, a Who song? I was trying to think of a Who song to make a joke, and <laughs> I can't even do it right forgiven. now. I don't Let's know. see, what are one of their dumb songs? <laughs> Uh, I actually don't Pinball mind, Wizard I don't even know how that goes Baba O'Reilly They're all dog <laughs> yeah. shit And this fucking guy's got a whole computer full of kitty porn And we're all like he's British so he's weird You know like, Oh <laughs> is that why <laughs> maybe, I guess But maybe the Brits deal with that sort of thing differently Because their system's different It's You're not 
Uh, is it? Mate, You're guilty you got to stop it. looking at the caddies. Like that? Hey, if, it, if she over 18, it's gross. <laughs> <laughs> he says, how come you can't look at a little kid naked? <laughs> They might. They might have laws that, like, you can jerk off to kitty porn. It's fine. You think that's in the laws there? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I might. You can wank your Uh, bean. To our UK fans. You can wank (laughs) off to a kid. Yeah, let us know what pedophilia uh, rules are in uh, in the UK. Can you drop us a line about how over there you guys are like, you can jerk off to it for sure. You can have it on your computer as long as you ain't doing it in real life. (laughs) That was a really good accent. I know. I was... (laughs) I was reading my next thing here for you. He says, you can use your computer. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, on your cable. Did you watch the final episodes of The Last Dance yet? Yes. What a wonderful, and what a revelation that came up in the final episodes of The Last Dance. Uh, we learned that Michael Jordan's famous flu game was, was actually food, food poisoning. poisoning. Oh. By the way, there's a big controversy about, like, now they're like, do you believe it? Do you think the guy's poisoned it you know to get food poisoning it doesn't have to be poison in the food right you i don't know why like, <laughs> shit nobody right? is right. talking about the fact they're like do you think that they poisoned it like no. i've gotten food poisoning from all different things i don't think anybody put poison in it no. you know? and how obvious th- i mean the way that they painted the picture yeah the way michael painted the picture he's like there were all these dudes standing around the mm-hmm. pizza looking at it when they delivered it yeah but then like right before that michael jordan told the story about one of the players on the bullets that he was facing and he made up a thing where he goes uh he said nice game to me sarcastically and i used that and i scored all the points he scored in the first half yeah, I, yeah. and he made it up completely so yeah. i was like how, how how do we believe anything michael well what jordan do you think said? happened mm-hmm. that game for real which game? The, 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 the flu game. I don't think... I think he was sick and he played well, you yeah. know? I mean, it's nothing more than that. We don't have to treat him like he's a fucking... You know what else? Did, uh, did this bother you about the... Um, like, when... Once it had aired and everything... Yeah. All these people were like, you know, Mike, he could have been nicer. And, <laughs> like, one guy wrote an article, like, one thing we learned is that you don't have to be a bully. Oh my to God. Be, and I'm what like, a queef. Exactly. Yeah. I'm like, what a fucking... To me, it was just like, you know, I admire like how dedicated this guy was, his work ethic, and that he was a sad... I admire it. I, you're like, I admire you're that like, he should have been nicer. Yeah, yeah, I love his grudge. I love the grudge. I love uh, revenge. Yeah. All I that lo- stuff. But you know what I admired more? That is the gumption of the Utah Jazz fans for p- trying to poison his pizza. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> I, you know what I used to do? When the Patriots were playing the Bills, I used to know what hotel they would stay in. And I would orchestrate early morning, because I was doing morning radio, I would orchestrate people going and Honking parking the in horse? the parking lot and making their car alarms go off at early hours. Wow. Yeah. I didn't go as far. Some people went as far as to pull the fire alarms in their hotels at early mornings. Yeah. I never oh did that, because that's God. a crime. That's it's real fandom. Crazy. Yeah, but that's what, yeah, but I respect it. Yeah, but like, know? the people yeah. who are now saying like, but Michael... He was. He said nasty things, and he wasn't always nice to everybody. He punched so like, Kerr. Um, he's a nice guy. Yeah, it's like, well, yeah, he's a psychopathic, competitive athlete. Yeah, this whole idea that people's feelings can't be hurt anymore is just absurd. Well, so yeah. what? And he then hurt all people's. By feelings? the way, all the people who, who are like, he should, he didn't have to be as mean. They have no rings. They have no championship. Right. Rings. They're not winners. God damn it. Yeah, They're all exactly. crybaby. You know, losers. Like, you know, to be a champion, and they're like, well, you could win a championship, but, but still be nice. Like, mm, okay. Name one. Yeah. Yeah. Name one. Nice guy that won a championship. Good, good, good point, Potter. Because I can put, put a fucking black eye on any of them. Yeah. If you ask me. But uh, <laughs> along the lines of basketball, LeBron was, uh, he was on a live stream because all these players are bored out of their fucking minds right now, and they're yeah. going on these live streams. And they're divulging some secrets. And LeBron mm. seems to think back when the NBA was locked out, there was a, kind of a joke going around that he would join the NFL as a tight end. Yeah. And LeBron went on a live stream saying that that was a serious consideration. Oh, that really? he was just going to play tight end in the NFL. Jeez. Don't you think he would have fucking gotten smoked? Like that would have never been a thing. That's not like a. <sighs> He's that's not a sport such... you can transition to. Unless you are just such a remarkable. Yeah, but the contact athlete. the. Other than another level the contact, of contact would be the contact would be the like the big adjustment, but don't forget like we're talking about someone who's six eight and you know two sixty 
with like all muscle and has a 40 some inch vertical like Dude, i'm saying the first that first time jj speed... watt hits him he's dead I don't he know. he's not used to hit it getting hit like that he's not used to getting hit but I also it was preposterous i can't believe you're siding with lebron i i think i think he's such a remarkable athlete that he could he could almost do anything that you like at you know he might not become a, a an all-star in every sport but he's so he's such a freak that I think you, he could be like, yeah, I'm going to start playing tennis. I'm just gonna and, walk. Yeah. Well, tennis is not f- NFL football. Well, I know. I'm making the example yeah, that yeah. any sport. I'm saying. He could play baseball maybe or something. And maybe tight end is crazy. But, I mean, wouldn't you like to see him try a bunch of positions? No, I would love to see him try. I mean, Don't imagine get me that, dude. I'd love to see Hey, we're going to we're gonna throw it up in the corner. You go ahead and just jump, jump up and get it. Yeah. I'll throw it about 16 feet in the air. But he's not used to a it. giant man That's true. destroying him when he makes that catch. But I also, the, you have... When you watch someone play basketball, we have really no comprehension of like just how strong is that guy. Right. You know, I I think he's probably freakishly strong. Sure. Right. Like if he were to grab you like this, he could probably throw most grown men through a fucking window. I'm sure. Of course. You know, so I don't know. I just think he's not used to that type of contact and he was silly for making that statement. But anyhow, speaking of silly statements. Obama did some uh, graduation commencements. Yeah. Did you notice that? And I just thought it would be funny if they made Obama say all the names of everyone who's graduating. Like, he's got to <laughs> sit on there and just read them all. Be like, okay, uh, Sarah Handley. Uh, and he's got to fucking sit there. That's a pretty, it. for a very quick impression, that was, that's pretty good. Yeah, that was That's right. my Obama. Good. Well, today. He's we're finally, <laughs> we're, we're in this election year, and he's, uh, there's, there, you know, Trump's been sassing him for three and a half yeah. years. And, and now, he's been fucking could, Skype. <laughs> he's been quiet and like just. Mm. What's that shit? It's kite flying in the in the <laughs> kite surfing or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Shit. He's like, I don't give a shit. And now he's like, he's like, <laughs> these guys are a joke. The administration is they're lying. Like they're now they're sassing each other. We've never seen it. Like, I got off my ski dude. President's <laughs> shitting talking. To, yeah, got off my ski dude to tell you Trump sucks. <laughs> I'm all gonna right. go back on mosquito. I'm gonna go to Hawaii. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's all. I looked at the headlines, and that's all I took a gander yeah, at. That was great. That was Thank really you. Good I'm work. glad you enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, we enjoyed it very much. Uh, so yeah, I hope we. Uh, I hope we don't go into any war anytime soon. And uh, that, that, you know, good looking out. Yeah, Kay. absolutely. I'm excited for your tick cups next week, buddy. Me too. Me, Me too. too. <laughs> I'm gonna have some real fucking C cups after this shit. Holy, it's gonna hell. be nice. Real nice. <laughs> <laughs> all right um should we take, uh, take a break yeah we got all kinds of stuff coming just up. real quick let me show you um uh you know like that as the <gasps> you want to yeah. see tommy john's real quick me, let me show fave? you tommy john's this is a updated tommy okay, john's okay uh-oh you want to fuck me in the ass fuck you <laughs> Come on, fuck me in the ass, motherfucker. I need me a line of white girl. Fuck. I'm here fucking masturbating and I fucking... Woo! You know what I'm saying? What's going on? Where is he? Is he in a facility of some sort? What makes you say that? He's wearing a lot of white, like like a... Because you can come so fucking quick. I can't fucking see you. And I can't fucking tell you, you will fucking come in 20 to 30 fucking seconds. It's so sad. What's going on? I need a fucking line of white girl. Fuck. I fucking love this fucking whore. Mr. Clavicles. <laughs> Mr. Clavicles, thanks very much wow. for pulling that. <laughs> It was really cool. Um, Jesus. Wow, what is going on? He's on a decline. Something's happening. Woo! <laughs> he's, he's done a little too much party. <laughs> a little yeah, bit. <laughs> well, wow. you know, meth. Don't do it, it's bad. <laughs> That's what it does to Don't you. Don't do it, it's bad. Um, all right, we got a lot of wrestling stuff to get into oh right boy. after this break. And we're back. Uh, joining us is a huge, huge fan of the worldwide sport of professional wrestling, a comedian and podcaster, our friend, Tony Hinchcliffe. Hey. All right. Thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. Had to swing by when you started insulting one of the greatest forms of entertainment on the planet. Yeah, I really wanted to get into wow. this video. Well, as you can I, see. I like you refer to it as entertainment and not sport. Well, I mean, if you just want to jump right into it. Let's jump into it. Sport 
it's a lot more athletic than a lot of oh, things that you guys know. consider sports. Like what? Golf. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, bowling, yeah. Bowling. Cricket. Okay. Cricket. We can go down a long Curling. list. Almost everything that's not basketball, football, UFC, everything else, it's got it. Curling, it's a combination. Puppeteering. Of, of athleticism and drama, right? Yep. And... It's always entertaining. Do you think it's fair to call it a sport? It that's right on the line. Do you think it's fair to call you it a see fight? That he hesitated. That's uh sometimes it is a fight. There's times where it is a fight and there's times where it is a sport. It's def I mean it's definitely scripted, it depends on But scripted. Scripted for sure. Scripted so outcome. is Game of Thrones. Right. Um, a lot of, I've, I've been getting a lot of that when I when I first made it into the news. Yeah. Um everybody was like, "Wait till he finds out." That the Spider Man's not real. Yeah. Yeah. And I was did like, you know Whoa. That? Did I didn't you? I didn't know. <laughs> Does it ruin it for Now you? I'm like, wait, what? Look. And then they're like, wait till he finds that breaking bad scripted. Yeah. I wonder if he'll I even enjoy it. it then. I'm like, that's a good point. Look, good mayonnaise point. is real, but right. sometimes it goes bad. Right. Wow. How about that? You kind of changed the whole my whole perspective there on everything. There you go. I know. I knew I decided <laughs> on the drive here. I'm like, if I put it in mayonnaise, Tom will understand. Yeah. Mayo and me. <laughs> Right here. <laughs> Mayo and me. Mayo and me. Now, I'm embracing, let me, you know. Let me just say that, like, you can watch UFC, right? I'm a huge, I'm one of the rare hybrid. I mean, you are. I, it's not that rare. There's a lot of pro wrestling UFC fans. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of both. And sometimes UFC, sometimes it'll just be a janky matchup of chemistries. And it won't be. It won't be great. Quite That's that true. Is especially as great as you thought it would be. Whereas, that happens a lot. That's right. right. Whereas with pro wrestling, sometimes it's greater than you thought it would be, and it's always sort of as entertaining as you thought it would be. No, because it is scripted. It has the benefit of a script. Silly. Look, it's here's the thing. I want to know. Childish. I feel like I can beat anybody in the in the world in wrestling. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I feel in that for a number of reasons. First of all, I'm dope. I'm Mystic Rick. Mm -hmm. I have Solstice with me. That I have Solstice the, right here. It doesn't seem very excited about this. <laughs> she's fine another hardcore wrestling fan from the world of comedy rarely seen without his swastika armband it's steve <laughs> simone <laughs> hi guys hi steve. well a hardcore fan when i was a kid like I, so tell me that so you're you were you were a yeah. hardcore fan yeah when i was a kid i loved it when you were a kid are you trying to say that wrestling's for children i think by and large yes like i honestly i do i think like, yeah. that's what it's, that's what it should be for. I saw the first WrestleMania and it meant something to me. Mm -hmm. Another hardcore wrestling fan, also a, a great comedian, mm. uh, a great voiceover actor, uh, the great Earl Skakel. Thank you so yeah. much for coming by. Skakel. Well, um, thank you guys. I've I appreciate it. I've known you for, uh, since the very beginning. I've known you forever. You're a comedy brother and I... I can't believe you're a wrestling fan. I didn't know this about you. Well, you got to be in the closet when you're a wrestling fan if you think it's real like I do, because it is real. <laughs> These guys break their bones. They break their backs. They die before they're 40. I mean, you don't... Now, you aren't know. you also a big hockey fan? Big hockey guy, because it's like the only sport left for white people. And uh, yep. great, now I'm doing bits. A wrestling fan that can speak in complete sentences. We're really happy to welcome very talented comedian and actor Ron Funches. All right. Hi, Ron. Thanks for coming. Oh, you just don't start with the disrespect, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. You invite me here. You bring me to your home, and then you just you disrespect me. You disrespect my people. You disrespect the very people that give you the money so that you can go on tour. You act like wrestling fans ain't your fans. I, um, <laughs> yeah, I stand by that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I came down here to get in your fucking ass yeah. and let you know you being ridiculous. How dare you, yes. Tom Segura? You disrespecting Ric Flair. You disrespecting Harley Race. You disrespecting Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. You disrespecting John Cena. You disrespecting The Rock. These are wrestlers. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I should have given I thought you they that were information. Superheroes or something. Yeah. They are superheroes. Oh, they oh, are. Sorry. They are. And, they are and here's the thing. Everybody he listed is significant. If you're a fucking child, right? You know. 
if you're a kid and you like you like I mean yeah right I thought they have, were Paw Patrol right, characters they are something. they're basically a little Pixar oh, animated oh you gonna talk about that yeah. about The Rock The Rock about Dwayne The Rock about <laughs> Mr. Fast and Furious Just, let's be about little. Mr. Hobbs and Shaw <laughs> Let's be real clear about Dwayne real quick, okay? Let's Whoa, be real okay. clear about Okay, you must know du- each other. You we, must know each other. Let's be clear about Dwayne. Dwayne <laughs> tried to play a real sport, and he tried to play football where real men line up, and you got to be good to beat your opponent. But a little problem happened by the name of Warren Sapp was born. And he showed up, and then Mr. <laughs> Can you smell what my mom's cooking? He he joined the bodybuilding ballet and and started his own, you know, yeah. little song. And I'm in my anchor with his fucking weird. Well, now I, I must respect the fact that you apparently done your research and you do know about the Warren Sapp, <laughs> Dwayne Johnson incident down in Miami. That's that right. is actually cool that you know that. I uh, I have the turkey slicer. I can do anything. I can finish anyone. So if it's like if we're scripting it out, why why can't I just beat anybody in wrestling? Why? <sighs> See right away, I can I can feel you being like that's a good point, Tom. That is a pretty good point that you have there. If it's scripted, technically you could beat anybody, but mm-hmm. you, you still have to you know you start from the bottom and you grow. You don't just you know, most people don't come out guns a blazing. Yeah. I'm putting it out there, by you the know. way. I'm down to fight anybody in wrestling. Oh, anybody. you better believe it. Brock Lesnar. Come get it, dude. Okay. Have you seen, first of all, how does this turkey slicer work? Because I'm a big fan of <laughs> well, let me tell the you technique something. of wrestling. If you keep pressing about the turkey slicer, you're going to be covered in slices. <laughs> but that's, like, that's what happens? Yeah, you get covered in turkey slices. <laughs> that's after you beat me? You, that's the move. You, you bring out turkey slices? No, I just have them. Well, see, they, that would be technically that would be a disqualification. Why? Because that's using a foreign object. Wow. What about a chair? I can't hit up someone with a no, fucking folding chair. No, but he, he chair? covers you in turkey slices after he does. Wait a minute. Oh. What about the chairs? The chairs are that's only that's a DQ in a hardcore match. Yeah. What do you mean? It is a DQ or it's not a it's DQ? It's a DQ. Oh. Wow. Geez. Yeah. Now, now this is starting to change your tune. A little no, bit. I'm just saying that, like, if if you're gonna, <laughs> you thought if you were you're just gonna go up against everybody with a chair, you're just no, gonna I come just... in with a chair and slices of turkey and dominate a <laughs> sport. Yeah. That's a, that's exactly what he's gonna do. <laughs> well, Tony. look, there's there's a lot of who's you know Jim Cornette very well. So for people who don't know, can you explain who he is? Jim Cornette is a very very passionate former wrestling manager current wrestling we could say journalist Mm -hmm. uh, a a person of the that reports on the sport he had some things to say about what i had to say really i haven't gotten to see that yet there's no pretense of trying to make anybody believe anything it is stupid it is silly and it is fake (laughs) but it's also not wrestling so while i want to defend the wrestling business i'm more insulted by the guy with his hands in his pockets the guy the dick spot guy with the invisible man guys who are supposedly professionals in the business doing things that make the business worse than what this guy is saying about wrestling and wrestling fans he's just some fucking ass wipe comedian (laughs) it's not even on fucking real television (laughs) these are actual supposed professionals supposedly in the industry (laughs) so it it depends on what he's knocking if he's knocking professional wrestling (laughs) fuck this guy and feed him fish heads but if he is commenting on what he has seen presented as professional wrestling that we've seen over the last weeks and months i don't blame him if that's the first time he's fucking seen it and he saw that, if the, if the first time I ever saw professional wrestling was either this money in the bank fucking bullshit or <laughs> some of the fucking stupid shit that the fucking outlaw mud show contingent of all elite wrestling does, that'd be the last time I ever saw wrestling. We wouldn't be having this conversation. So Jim said that Tommy Buns has a good point. Wow. wow. I mean, what do you think of that? First of all, I have to say there is nothing funnier to me than when someone 
that uh, is out of the loop <laughs> yeah. criticizes someone for not being on real television, on real television. <laughs> yeah, yeah. instead on Netflix. Yeah. Like, who's watching that? <laughs> yeah. This that, podcast that, is like AM radio. That, no one's listening. That bullshit Netflix got 160 million subscribers. <laughs> That's great. He's not even on a real television channel with real never commercials. Watched it again because it's stupid. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hulk Hogan went bad? Yes. And it was one of this. the greatest things ever. Ever so far? Did you know that? Wait, did so, you know that? Yes, I did know that. But the so fuck? far, these are this things. has been like my mother syncing up her phone with her laptop. Christina <laughs> is like, <laughs> she did what and fought like that. Here's why, I. I don't watch wrestling oh, or football because I'm not a lesbian. We've I discussed know. this before. <laughs> I'm a straight woman. I don't enjoy lesbian things, and also. I don't fucking care. But pro wrestling fans, the salt of the earth, the good people, oh. the people that don't want people to get hurt, the people that want there to be friendships. That's where you got a problem, Tom Segura. That's what I got a problem with. I got a problem with, I got a problem with these phony ass fights. Oh shit, no, you did not say the word phony. You lucky I'm not Dr. D. David Stoltz or I would have slapped you across your fucking face just for using the word fake in my presence. Fake athletes, they're failed athletes. They ain't shit. They couldn't cut it in a real sport. So they jump on over to the bodybuilding ballet that you watch every Monday night and try to get into, do a little dance. Oh, look, hey, we're going to do a little fake fight. We'll work it out ahead of time. There's no competition. So I'm guessing Tom Segura, every time you go on stage and you telling jokes, you actually feel that exact moment and you feel exactly what you're saying at that time? 100%. Oh, for real? For real, for real. <laughs> Something tells me you full of shit, Tom Segura. Something tells me sometimes you telling jokes that you angry and you ain't angry at all. Sometimes tell me jokes that you acting like you annoyed. You ain't annoyed at all. Something tells me you the phony, Tom Segura. <laughs> What got you into it? As like, so you're a kid. Is that how you first get into it? Yeah, I was a kid, and uh, I started to notice how the African American wrestlers were portrayed. Uh, shout out to the WWF for the way they gave their characters to those guys. You had Kamala, who was a savage uh, animal from Uganda, who's actually from Philadelphia. Same difference. And, uh, <laughs> you had the junkyard dog coming to the ring with a dog collar, going. Arr, arr, arr. <laughs> like, uh -huh. you know, it, so these are negative portrayals that the WWF embraced? Well, I don't think uh, Slick, the uh, jive-talking pimp, was, uh, you know, it's right up there with how uh, African-Americans were portrayed on what's happening. Uh -huh. I mean, <laughs> you know, and then you had the, the r most racist one was Akeem, the African Dream, who was the one-man gang, and then they turned him black. So, like, he was a white guy as white as you and I are. A white guy named Akeem the African Dream? Can you please Google this? I have to oh, see this. Oh, you have to. Uh, the way they introduced him was Mean Gene Okerlund is in an alley in New York. And all of a sudden, you see these five black background dancers in grass skirts portraying savages. And they're all wearing, like, Air Jordans. And then Akeem comes out with Slick on, you know, my brothers. And it's like, oh, this is oh wow, this is crossing a line even in the eighties. Holy shit! So, wow. and that's him once he has the outfit on, the African. Yeah, is that the, a dashiki. He's got the dashiki, and you know, he he would do these like he would try and dance African American. I mean, I'm scared to like <laughs> I yeah. want to say the right terminology, right, and right. Uh, you know, and then you had Rowdy Roddy Piper. We have we have an African American shaking his head right now in our booth. <laughs> <laughs> well, you hide your wallets. Uh, <laughs> He's Sorry, going, mm -hmm. it's, good. it's a new era. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this, it, yeah, this is like the really ridiculous wow. era. Of and that's uh, Slick, the uh, jive-talking pimp, and the guy next to him was the big boss man who was allegedly a prison guard who met Slick in prison. I mean, they really went for it. They went for it, yeah. Mm -hmm. But okay. it's still real. I like, yeah. you know, that guy, uh, the one-man gang who's now uh, broke in Mississippi, boy, they really take care of their own, Vince McMahon. They got Pat Patterson running around molesting ring boys, but let's not take care of the Kamala has no legs. Now hold on, hold on. I is mean, are you? This is this stuff... like this feels like the Ronan Farrow of <laughs> of wrestling? What you're doing right now, you're exposing the truth right here. Well, I don't think it's a secret that Pat Patterson had it. He was like the Sandusky of the WWF, and he's in the Hall of Fame. Like, yeah, it, for wrestling, the Hall of Fame for wrestling. What? Yeah. yeah. Like, like, it's real, but, like, I don't think you should have a Hall of Fame for it. I'll draw the line there. Roddy Piper, the late, great Roddy Piper, yes. was a very dear friend of mine. How did oh. you guys become friends? Um, through Eric Abrams at the Improv. They were friends? 
No, he was organizing a show where Roddy wanted to start doing stand-up comedy. And at the time, I had a bit about watching pro wrestling with my brothers when I was like 10. Mm -hmm. When I thought it was... The shit. Yeah, when I thought it was as real as life got. Um, And then he was like, would you be willing to do a show with Rowdy Roddy Piper? And I was like, I couldn't say yes fast enough. Because that was my generation. That was... That was the reason why if you say, are you a fan? I would say yes, even though I haven't seen it in years. Mm-hmm. So um, I got to be really good friends with Roddy. I wouldn't want to say anything that would be disrespectful to his, what he devoted his life to. Cause he of was course. such a good, like the guy I knew was so different from the wrestling character. Sure. And he was such a sweet dad and uh, husband and a really good dude. It's like, and it was an honor to know him. That, that, that's very sweet. I, I mean, I think in terms like that's a lot like Mystic Rick, the character, yeah. and then Tom Segura is, you know, the guy. Right. And then I, I remember Roddy trying to explain to me um, that his generation of wrestling was back when you had to be that character 24 hours a day. Mm. So he was, you know, he would have to pay the cook 20 bucks to watch him cook his food so the guy didn't spit in it. He had to have a, a special leather jacket because he was stabbed three times from fans. Because they, they really believed Correct. you're the bad guy. Yes. Yeah. And he had to be a bad guy 24-7. And I think um, that couldn't have been easy. But yeah. that does lead you to believe that the fans are not so smart. right? Talked, they're, locked, and ready yeah. to rock. You guys are much smarter than me, but I think you could probably mm-hmm. surmise that wrestling fans skew on the homophobic side. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have guessed. <laughs> well, you wouldn't have to guess if you just looked at, you know, when you see a sign in the crowd saying Vince McMahon's a homo, you <laughs> might lean towards not so being. So this is, these are the two guys. Billy these are the Trey. two guys. Now, this wedding angle was taken so far that they were it on. looks more. like uh, Theo and Schaub. Yeah. I know. Oh. I was going to say that looks like Theo. <laughs> it does. On the, the left. Yeah it, yeah. it might be, right? A Photoshop yeah. thing. It kind of looks like him. And the guy oh, in the middle. Funny. And then Shab right there. Yeah. yeah. And then there's Callan in the middle. The guy in the middle <laughs> is a transit cop now. Like he was oh. a, like a legit wrestler. And, uh, you know, he played a gay wedding organizer. Oh, and what year was this put out? This was uh, probably about 98. Did they go with, oh, like, wow. we'll give you AIDS kind of, like, kind of <laughs> thing or no? No, they already had it. That, but, like, was that part of, like, if we fight you, you'll get HIV? We pin no? you down and give you AIDS? Well, that was another wrestler. Uh, there was another organization called XPW, and they had this wrestler who uh, was portrayed as having HIV. So, you know, his finishing move was to hit you in the stomach and then you somehow end up with your ass in the air, and he pumps you three times. What? No, yeah. is that real? Yeah, yeah. They were owned by a porn company. And what was the name no. of the wrestler? Angel. I'll never forget. Angel I, from how XPW. Could you yeah, yeah. It, no, it's like uh, I've been to Kiss concerts. I've been to Super Bowl. <laughs> from XPW. Put yeah. In XPW. Uh, yeah. Angel XPW. Uh, gay. Um, you know that should. Uh, that that'll do it. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> this guy was amazing. And a great wrestler. This guy right here? Yeah, he was a great wrestler. The hardcore homo, it says. Yeah, <laughs> what, what a shock that wrestling would have a character like that. But that's Jeez. not even... That's not the most offensive? Oh, they had uh, one time Rowdy Roddy Piper, rest in peace. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. He was... My re- name at the comedy store is under mm-hmm. Rowdy Roddy Piper. Yeah, Rowdy I know. <laughs> well, welcome to Hollywood, kids. Sorry, you weren't in WrestleMania. See ya, toots. Uh... <laughs> He wrestled Bad News Allen, who was a legit, this is why I get upset when people say wrestling's fake. Bad okay. News Allen was a 76 judo champion in the Olympics. And he, you know, obviously there's not a lot of money after judo, like it's not like a yeah. judo league. So he wrestled Rowdy Roddy Piper WrestleMania and Rowdy Roddy Piper was in black, half of his body was in blackface. Oh well, no, wow. I mean, if you look up uh, Bad News against Roddy, you'll see like, and when I brought it up to Roddy a couple times, really every time I saw him, and uh, he was like, he was pretty embarrassed by it. So like, yeah, I mean, yeah, ah. you, you, can, you can't, that's not a great shot, but. Uh, well, you can see it, yeah. Uh, but a great story. Uh, what's, the, what, what's the bit supposed to be? Yeah, that why he, is he half? He was, you know, Roddy was a heel, a bad guy, uh-huh. so he was just trying to piss. Uh, uh, oh, I'll piss you off by yeah. being in half right. blackface. Uh, in bad news, with his character was a militant black guy. Like he uh, would finish you and stand over you and give you like the, the uh, black power fist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And okay. uh, like Andre the Giant, this guy was such a badass. Well, I got to tell you, you've put a real nice kind of uh, feeling in our hearts with the whole world of wrestling so far. It's really kind of cool. Well, you know who you booked. I, I mean, know, they're, they're they're holy shit. Yeah, oh, I wow. mean, this is the real deal. This is not, uh, you know, Hulk what Hogan. Year, what years? <laughs> Is this that? was uh, 2015 <laughs> in my house. <laughs> what the fuck, man? <laughs> Unreal. Watch the dude on top. <laughs> what is happening here? He's put his finger in his ass. What was that? Sounds like her in another country. That's the actual turkey slicer that happened in, in, in the country of Turkey. It is in Turkey. Yeah. Is it? <laughs> That's how you really wrestle. That's, wow. That's what he's going to do. Mystic Rick. Does yeah, well. Mystic Rick also has. Yeah. The tank tickle. Yeah. Whoa. The tickler. Go in. <laughs> the turkey tickler. Yeah. And then your prostate explodes and I go. Ah, and then turkey slices. Wow. <laughs> Oh no my. one's ready. No this one's ready. This is quite a wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> this episode of Your Mom's House is sponsored by Blue Chew. Let's talk about something we could all use a little more of right now. Sex. Mm, okay. Don't look at me like that. Okay. Great sex. Guys, you can now increase your performance and get that extra confidence in bed. Listen up. BlueChew.com. That's blue, like the color blue. Blue Chew brings you the first chewable the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. You can take them anytime, day or night, even on a full stomach. And since they're chewable, they work up to twice as fast as a pill. That's what's up. Let's get it going right now. You can be ready whenever an opportunity arises. Blue Chew is made in the USA. It is prescribed online by licensed physicians, so you don't have to go to the doctor or wait in line. It's even cheaper than a pharmacy, and they prepare and ship it right to you in a discreet package. No awkwardness. You don't need to leave the house. Right now, we've got a special deal for our listeners. Visit BlueChew.com and get your first shipment free. Use our special promo code HOUSE. Just paying $5 in shipping. Again, that's B-L-U-E-C-H-E-W.com. Promo code HOUSE to try it free. BlueChew is the better, cheaper, faster choice. We thank them for sponsoring the podcast. Remember, when you support our sponsors... You help make this podcast possible, so please be sure to use our promo code HOUSE at BlueChew.com. All right, so we all know how ExpressVPN protects your privacy and security online, right? But here's something you might not know. You can also use ExpressVPN to unlock movies and shows that are only available in other countries. That's what's up. That means you can watch, hello, UK Netflix, because we all know we've binged everything on the American one. It's so simple to do. You just fire up the ExpressVPN app. You change your location to the UK, refresh Netflix, and boom, that's it. Do you like anime? Use ExpressVPN to access Japanese Netflix and be spirited away. But it's not just Netflix. ExpressVPN works with any streaming service. You got your Hulu, BBC iPlayer, YouTube, you name it. There are hundreds of VPNs out there. But the reason I use ExpressVPN to watch shows because it's ridiculously fast. There's never any buffering or lag. And you can stream in HD, no problem. So if you visit my special link right now at expressvpn.com slash your mom, you can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Support the show, watch what you want, and protect yourself with ExpressVPN at expressvpn.com slash your mom. Here's the real thing. And yes. you said it. And now you're backtracking. Okay. All right. You're say? backtracking like uh, it. Go, call her out. Call I'm her gonna out. call her out right now. Listen, I'm on just Team Mystic Rick, no matter what. Well he knows how to go down on ladies and he knows how to fight and fuck. Wow. That's right. And Damn. I'm rich. He knows the turkey slicer and the roast beef turkey slicer. Sli huh? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what did I say? Tell me. You Tell said me. When this all started that you <laughs> went to a live event I and did. you had a great time. Yana. I don't. I I was trying to be nice. 
Oh. I was a little, I was a little bored. I'm not gonna. I was a little bored. It was okay. I had a hot dog. I had some beer, and I watched the it's audience. A fun show. Mostly, it's, a fun show. it's it was also a fun show. it's also a hard it was thing. Fine. If you don't know any of fine. the storylines, and you go to a live event, well, it's like if you don't know anything about UFC, and you're going to your first UFC, and you're like, why are they? Why is that well, guy holding onto his arm? Yeah. Right. Well, I had the good fortune of the the boyfriend at the time who watched it all the time, right. and he filled me in on the Undertaker. I actually know who that one I is. I mean the Undertaker. Undertaker. I mean, how do you not get excited for the Undertaker? You mean Mark? <laughs> Undertaker. Oh, don't you call him that. You know, you mean Big Mark? No, don't you do that. <laughs> don't you do that. I'm going to jump across that don't, table. Don't break K- K-fab? I'm, K-fab? I'm K-fab? K-Fab? What is it? K-Fabe. K-Fabe? <laughs> I'm going straight for solstice. <laughs> <laughs> you will get the stamp on your forehead and the turkey slices all over I'm your body you, if you grab solstice. Solstice is going through the turkey slices. Well, I feel like, look, I feel like... You know, I know there's a lot of care. I feel like Mystic Rick is dope as shit. And I yeah. feel like it's starting to get recognized by wrestlers. I feel like what I've been see- seeing and, and, and putting out there the last week or so, I feel like wrestlers are really starting to come around. Spread the hitman heart. All I can say is this, Mystic Rick, you are never down for the count. You are the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. Even if you were in the sharpshooter, Mystic Rick, you would find the counter. Because you're a guy that never quits and never gives up. Oh and just keep those gosh. jeans high and tight and know that you are the excellence of execution in everything you do. And things will get better in time. And everybody's standing all around you. They're all supporting you. And just know that everybody loves you. Stay strong and stay safe. Why is he talking to you like it's a make-a-wish? Or well, like that? like, <laughs> that's well, a, is that a cameo Rick for some <laughs> cancer patient? <laughs> called- fucking, he's just shouting out Mystic Rick, dog. <laughs> Now, uh, that's uh, <laughs> that's Bret Hart, right? Oh, yeah. That's Bret the Hitman Hart. Who's that? The best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be. Multiple well, time. WWE, WCW. No, he's a nice guy. We were FaceTiming the other day, and he was just, we were just <laughs> Really? Talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me ask you something about this Mystic Rick character. Like, yeah. do you predict the future or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 like, how does this he's work? He's going to predict yeah, your injuries, here's I, Tony. Here's oh. what I predict. Ready? Uh, championship belts. Whoa. Hall of Fame inductions, tons of turkey. Wow. A new nest for Solstice. Ooh. Money, 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 money. That's what I predict. Wow. And you know who else predicts it? My man. Hey, Rick, Kurt. how you doing, my friend? It's your Olympic hero, no. Kurt Angle. No. And I just wanted to tell you that you're the only man I wouldn't dare risk my gold medals in the ring with. <laughs> you are so strong, you could even withstand the ankle lock. <laughs> oh, it's true. It's damn true. There you go. <gasps> what is happening? <laughs> I'm telling you, people respect me, man. <gasps> Who? How? How is this happening? <laughs> Mystic Rick is the shit. <laughs> That's right. It's powerful. That strong. is Olympic gold medalist <laughs> and multiple time champion, Kurt Angle. What do you think of Becky Lynch being pregnant? I'm mad about it. You know why? Why? Because it's not real. It's fake like that. Whole- <laughs> <laughs> no, the pregnancy is not real. It's definitely not real. Oh, the pregnancy is real. Come on, man. You don't think the pregnancy is real? That whole shit's phony. It's a phony ass fucking sport with phony storylines and fake athletes. They all ain't shit. Kamala, the Ugandan giant, who I actually met, uh, he was awesome. He's from Philly. He's from Philly. I, I met him backstage at a WWF. It's gotta event. feel good. And they're like, you're African. Yeah. <laughs> He's uh, like, no. I'm- you're black. Philadelphia. Philly. <laughs> but like the only thing that I would concede. <laughs> They're like, no, 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 no. I would concede Africa. Th- that wrestling is fake from the standpoint of some of them are playing characters. Like Kane and The Undertaker are not brothers and have supernatural powers. Hmm. But they still execute the moves. You know, yeah. uh, Kamala was billed as the Ugandan giant, but he lost both his legs to diabetes. So he's about 5'3 now. And uh, How big was he before? 6'7". Wow. I mean, Jeez. when I met him, it was like meeting a superhero, and he. Were you a kid when you met him, or not? I was thirteen, and my dad took me backstage at the Olympic Auditorium. Which so was, was this your sport as a kid? Like yes. Oh, it? absolutely. Okay. There's no because hockey wasn't big in LA. Yeah. You know, back then, and um, you know, I wasn't into baseball or, or football a little bit, but wrestling was my. That was the shit. WrestleMania was the Super Bowl to me, and to meet Kamala and to have him speak perfect English to me was the most mind blowing <laughs> thing I've ever. So in, in the ring or like on mic, he would do a heavy accent? No, he wouldn't even talk. What oh. he would do is he had this Asian manager named Kim Chi who wore a... Oh, there's many worse characters. Trust, Kim Chi is like the Pope of uh, racist characters. Kim Chi? 
So he wore a safari outfit with a mask. You never saw his face. And he was actually a Polish guy, but you know, for the. What? And that was his manager. But Kamala couldn't speak. He had, this is how stupid Kamala is. He had a uh, tribal paint on his face and he had a moon on his uh, stomach and then uh, two uh, like uh, solar system things on his gut. Who, and he thought they were bananas. <laughs> Kamala the Ugandan giant? Uh, yes, uh, not Kamala. Well, there's, right. there's another Kamala. I know, I know. And I'm there's Andre the giant. There's Andre there's the so giant. So if you see like oh, I see. Kamala, oh, I see. like he had the two stars on his chest. And so you see the moon on his stomach. Yeah. He goes up to Vince McMahon once and this, you know, he's not the smartest guy. He's like, hey, uh, I really like my character, but can we get rid of this banana on my stomach? And uh. they're like, uh, they were like uh, it's a moon. It's a moon. But it's just poorly Aww. drawn right yeah. so when i met him backstage so you uh, met him backstage and you're like this guy doesn't talk yeah and he I, I, you know he's six eight and i'm you know 13 so i'm you know i don't know five eight or whatever and he motions for me to come over and he extends his hand and he's like hello young man and i'm like uh what are you doing speaking english and he looks at me and goes my name is jim and i'm from tupelo mississippi hello there and i'm like uh no wow. it's not you're from uganda and then kim chi goes hi i'm steve i'm like wait what i did go to the wwe hall of fame induction ceremonies back in 2005 that's kind of recent yes and i went because it was roddy piper Ric Flair gave Piper's induction speech. Sylvester Stallone gave Hulk Hogan's. It was my whole childhood. And the Iron Sheik was there out of his mind. And he told a story that the um, promoter of the AWA, I think it was Vern Gagne, who was a legit tough guy, who was a real wrestler, who could really wrestle, offered the Iron Sheik $10,000 to break Hulk Hogan's leg instead of, instead of giving him the title. Really? Mm-hmm. And then, like, when we were kids, there was a guy named Harley Race that they said was a legitimate tough guy. Iron Sheik, by the way, mm. I remember the image and the character as a kid. Mm -hmm. But my favorite thing was in more recent years, uh, watching people wind him up. Like, he would go to the a greatest. radio station mm -hmm. or crazy. on Twitter. And they'd be yeah. like, you suck. And he'd be like, oh, fuck you. I'll break like, your back. And he really loses shit, though. Like, on the, in yeah. these radio station things, he yeah. would fucking go crazy. And he was a dangerous and they're dude. And like, you're going to, people would hold him, like, you're going to have a heart attack. Well, he would, like, he, I remember he came, he, Russell Peters, this is like, back when the comedy store was a ghost town. It was like 2008, and I was going up for like eight people, and everybody was like, dude, the Iron Sheik's here. The Iron Sheik's, out of the eight, one of them was the Iron Sheik. And they were like, you got to give him the business a little bit. So I started to talk about Hulk Hogan. And then the Iron Sheik came up on stage. And I was like, I could oh. easily die right now. Because he, he came was, on stage? Yeah, but he was really nice. And Russell Peters was with him holding the belt. So I felt uh, a little safer then. Yeah, that's cool. And then, but he was an Olympic wrestler. And he yeah. was a bodyguard for the Shaw of Iran. Like, a that was legit. A, a legit tough guy. Yeah. yeah. Wow. See, but yeah. when you say that the way it started before Vince McMahon took over the whole enterprise that sounds like hey that's sporty when your people are competing in these different regions to get the title the championship belt thing it was then, more interesting but i think at its core it's always just been a morality play and i think that's what i bought into as a kid good versus evil good versus evil right. that simple Which is a good, teaching a children good thing. things yeah as a kid i loved it and it that's feels what, like you're saying wrestling it's for kids <laughs> uh yeah i mean honestly i think it's the same thing like with like the Marvel universe yeah. or something like that. Yeah, like another thing I for think children it, too. Right. Yeah. But I think adults can enjoy it. They can. But when I hear people like to your point, like when I hear people like I go like when because it sucks now. I mean, isn't it like inappropriate almost for wrestlers to be like, I'm a champion? No, it's not, Segura. Why? I mean, uh, Ric Flair's a 16 time champ. You know, he. He busted his ass. He broke Here his back. Again. You guys don't like Ric Flair? Well, I, I mean, look, I, yes, of course. And Ric Flair's a fan of Mystic Rick, who, you know, that's who I've been in the ring lately. I've been Mystic Rick. Mystic Rick's the best, the fastest, the best lover there is. Yeah. Well, I'll leave that to you guys. I don't want to get into your love. No, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm like getting involved and I'm going into the ring as Mystic Rick. Well, maybe you and I could wrestle if you think it's fake. Okay. I, I'd like a match. My name is a uh, Big Dick Bandit. I take issue with one part of the whole, the whole wrestling world, mm -hmm. and that is co-opting the term champion. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's kind of disrespectful to you know a championship. If you if if we're agreeing that 
things can be predetermined and there's we're like you you know we know who the winner is going to be then isn't using the cha- the term champion disrespectful you know what i mean like a like you to, know to that Olympians, it, like, like yeah, to an Olympian, champions. to like Michael Jordan, to Tom, like they're champions. They had to, they didn't know they were going to win. You have yeah. to earn that championship. Yeah, you can't. So these guys are like, I'm a 16 yeah. time world champion. Oh. You can't compare the Tomb Raider to to <laughs> Michael Jordan. <laughs> the Tomb Raider. <laughs> That's his fucking <laughs> Undertaker. <laughs> Did you just call him the Tomb Raider? I mean, is that wrong that we're saying that? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> These names are so dumb. You look at Rick in the face. (laughs) (laughs) I guess you have somewhat of of an argument there, but the only person (laughs) to win it 16 times is Ric Flair. Oh, really? Who, I mean, you must respect Ric Flair. Who doesn't respect Ric Flair? But the question is also, does Ric Flair... The second greatest Rick in wrestling history. The second greatest Rick. (laughs) But the question is, does Ric Flair respect Mystic Rick? You better shut the fuck up. My main man, Mystic Rick. Oh, my God. I understand that you're the only man alive that rivals me. The nature boy. Are you kidding me? You actually rival me? That you are ready to compete and tell the world you lived a lifestyle like mine? That you've been limousine riding, jet flying, kiss stealing, wheeling, dealing? Are you kidding me? Wow, not even a chop could keep you down, huh? Well, you're the champ, and I'm the one to tell you. Thanks. So keep feathering it, brother. Oh, my congrats goodness. And you're beautiful, exotic, and extremely hot wife, classy Christina. Wow. Whoa, Christina, looking as old you can look. Mystic Rick, it's your job to make Christina wake up every morning and go, woo! <laughs> Mystic wow. Rick, let's do that again. Yeah. Woo, 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 woo. Oh my goodness. I get why you, you liked it as a kid. Do you feel like your interest now is because it's nostalgia? Like, is your, is your interest in wrestling now due to the fact that it was something you followed as a kid? Well, I don't like the current product, you know. Like, Why not? Uh, well, it's just fitness models, and it's still real. You know, they still get hurt. I mean, there's a guy named Seth Rollins. He almost broke Sting's neck twice. Uh, not the uh, bass player, but uh, <laughs> Sting, uh, the wrestler, uh-huh. who, who actually copyrighted the name, and Sting, the bass player, has to pay him money. So not all wrestlers are Sting, morons. the singer? Sting, the singer, has to pay Sting, the wrestler. For the uh, name? Yeah. Oh, Hilarious. wow. So Sting's no dummy. Uh, by the way, I have Seth seven of his t-shirts from uh, oh, I won't say the website but uh, sting.org yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's, it's just not uh, it's still real today but back then they were uh, you know like Abdullah the butcher would you know take a fork and put it in your head and jab you with it now they don't do stuff like that well look um, I'm down to wrestle I'm down I'd like uh, to challenge you. Can't yeah. believe Earl's challenging Mystic Rick. I'm challenge you, Mystic Rick, because it's the old saying in life: you like to hear someone's doing pretty good, but you don't want to hear they're doing better than you. And physically, I've always done better than you. And you think wrestling's <sighs> fake? We'll get all your crew in there. I don't want anyone helping me, and I'll beat your fat ass. Okay, <gasps> let's do it. Let's do it. By the way, I'd love to do your podcast again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remain a big fan of yours, Ron. I love uh, you, I love both of you this guys. It's fun to do. Um, sorry, things got pretty heated there. Um, okay, but you know, just let Mystic Rick know. Oh, anytime. I really do. Uh, I love you. You're hilarious. You're a great guy. Great comic. Appreciate you coming here, Thanks. and um, hopefully, some of the uh, you know people out there will pick sides now. <laughs> <laughs> You have taken full advantage of the system. <laughs> you are using it. And I, it has never been done before in wrestling history. Yeah. And I love it. Wow. Thank you. You're Thank on you, Team Mystic I Rick mean, now. this is powerful. What's Wait a minute. Happening? Are you converting to the dark side of the force? Are you on our side? <sighs> Look, I mean. Will you be a Team Mystic Rick supporter? Are you on it? <sighs> Will mean, you throw some slices of turkey? Will you throw a turkey's leg? Will you comment on wrestlers' pages? Like, uh, are you going to take on Mystic Rick? <laughs> Look, I mean, I guess I really have no choice. Thank you. Yes. 
when it comes Appreciate to it. when it comes to Mystic Rick and you know we're all <laughs> brothers and sisters. That's right, of brother. The same industry and as a fan of both comedy and pro wrestling, I think I have no choice. But you've probably foreseen this since you're a Mystic. <laughs> That's and, true. You know, I'm just <laughs> falling right into your trap. Hold on, let me. Yeah, I did see it. <laughs> <laughs> this is incredible. Your powers are mind boggling. Yeah. Well, wait till these wrestlers get a hold of it. They're going to be <laughs> fucking shit in their pants. <laughs> oh, They're going to get the hot bowl of poutine, the stamp on the forehead, and the turkey <gasps> slices. Ooh, are you going to throw a hot bowl of poutine yeah. in the ring in the when ring, you win? Yeah. And then I put the baby raper stamp on their forehead. <laughs> Pow. Wow. <laughs> you have a lot of, there's a lot of things you're lugging down to the ring with. Uh, you. I'm yeah. mystic, man. We got all kinds of shit in our field. <laughs> My goodness. That's powerful. <laughs> well, look, we got a new. Uh, mystic fanatic here. Your so my, mystic mania has taken over. Um, it's 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 tough for me to say, but I'm switching sides here. I'm on Team Mystic. Yes, yeah. we did it, babe. We did it. Yeah. You hear that solstice? <laughs> so, yeah, we'll do photos, all shit, little while. Um, thank you for stopping by, though. Thank I really you. appreciate so good you. Good to see you. We missed you. It was, it's a pleasure to be here as always. Love you guys. Appreciate Love it, brother. You. Love yeah. you, babe. Hi, thank you for watching that episode of Your Mom's House. I really appreciate it. If you want to see more, you can click on any of these videos in this general area. And also, if you haven't subscribed, please do. It helps feed our cats. Don't have any cats. <laughs>